I have oh, yeah. fixed my. I was talking to Durgados. Are you? Have you ever talked to that guy? Yeah. He apparently Durgados. just left a, a like yoga retreat for like five. He said he was in retreat for five years or something. It's a long time for anything. Yeah. But I told him. I told him that. I enjoyed not feeling like I had to like pull my punches and act normal as much when I'm talking to him as I do with just the world in general. Well, that's and, good. Yeah, I thanked him. And we talked a little bit. Yeah, it's good to have those outlets. Yeah, he was talking about, because he gave a presentation-ish sort of thing, sort of impromptu, but um, they were... He said that he thought there were two main ways of thinking, like two main types of mind. And I came back and argued that there's developmental models, and a lot of those are like seven stages. And why two? And he said that the the fact that the hemispheres are so large in relation to the size of the corpus callosum that connects them, that there's just sort of a physical reason for there to be two main ways of being. Well, we're going to figure that out now that we have these decentralized systems. As long as we can kind of get the civil attack under control so, and embrace something like a universal identity, people are going to build out. As long as that key stays with that person, they're going to build out whatever. Have you read anything about Buterin's soulbound token? I saw the first posting by one of his bros. I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the OGs and the whole chain thing. And I liked it immediately. I think on Twitter, it's like I retweeted it. I'm like, because my in our business, our Web2 business, my my wife deals a lot with um, succession planning, you know, in corporations. Like when you have people retiring and they kind of know everything about the business, who are the next people that are going to drive it forward? I was going to say, um, Facebook, rec- Facebook suggested you to me. I have no idea how it figured that out. But Facebook? Pop- yeah. No, I, I, I maybe it, it was you. No, it was Scott. Something, something. No, maybe Twitter, but Facebook, I've been... On un- Facebook. Wow. Well, and I Facebook. haven't been active in Facebook in almost six years now. Maybe I have five and no a half idea. years. I have no idea. But if you have an account, it probably has a friend request. Do I even have a me. presence there? Like, do I'll people, like, what, up. tag I'll, me or I'll, something? I'll find my phone and look it up. Yeah, see, I can't even access Facebook because I... But I never deactivated my account. I'm one of those guys that just said, I'm just not going to use this again. Yeah. Now, it's probably, it has my, like, color glide stuff on it. Anyway, I yeah, I'd like you to share your screen with me and show no me my profile. Idea, <laughs> I had no idea how it how it made that connection. That was a Yeah, real... algorithms are strong, man. I mean, I maybe it is through through Twitter. I mean, I looked you up on Twitter or something at some point. It could be I Twitter. Think. It could be Twitter. Could have been GitHub. I mean, I don't know where all those feelers go. Maybe. But it somehow did, and that's pretty smart. I'm I'm kind of okay with the way that technology is going, where there's not going to be as much private information, but it's going to be okay because so much more behavior is going to be permissible. Pretty right. much, if it doesn't hurt anybody else. You can do it. <laughs> and nobody else cares about anybody really. I mean, about the stuff that doesn't affect them. I, I I have to I have to get the part right that is kind of. People will have multiple accounts, public, private key pairs, whatever yeah. the, the schema is, and they are creating profiles. They're creating personas. My gaming one could be completely different than my sport one, which can be completely different for my family one or yes. whatever it is. You yes. know, it's like You'll that's why I like the stuff you're talking about. You're 13 anything's, you're seven anything's. You're, you're, we yeah. look at those and say, could we build those into an algorithm on? self id or something within metagame and if people are willing to participate and they know that they're building out at least their truth it might not be the truth truth but at least it's how they want to represent themselves we can utilize that in all of the protocols we're working with because we're querying the public source that they want us to query that that's hugely powerful no i I almost see a path forward hopefully i can figure out enough of it in the next week and a half to give a reasonable 20 to 25 minutes on it. Well, I think that kind of what we can do today in the next one hour is I'm just going to brainstorm with you. And there might be a way for us to even do one of the things or two of the things that I bring up. If not, it's just a matter of me trying to 
do a private label deployment where you and I are in complete alignment. I mean, you've built this okay, thing. So, so everything I do, do, everything I do, I have to make sure that you're comfortable that I'm not like trying to not have you get credit or be front and center, whatever it needs to be. But I feel that I have to make these private label things for all the use cases. So let me show you briefly just my thoughts and then I'm going to let you take over. Okay? okay. We know what we have to deal with right here. It's like, I know this, I don't know it inside and out because we're going to dry run it again today. Everything that I can do with the existing, not user interface, but the existing sort of guts of it, sort of the back end, everything that's operating, what these tokens do, who should be holding the permissions. I just want to ask you a few questions there. But over here on the right hand side, I've been telling you, I just need to start doing some private label ones that are going to be use case specific, insurance yeah. company, whatever, dog catcher. So what I've done, oh, and this is where I think this data needs to go. Like simply, if we go query the tokens we want, like out of our smart contract, and let's say there's five of them that I care about, or let's say there's one I care about, and I want to see who owns those tokens. Because remember, we can keep submitting 1155s on a certain token. I can hold 10 of a certain 1155. And maybe though that's credibility. Maybe that's the amount of times that I went and, you know, did an no, obstacle I course do or I showed up early. I want to do it in proportion to time. An hour is a token. Yeah, and perfect. So so there you go. So there's the use case that I'll do. It's like an hour is a token. Did you show up to work or didn't you? Can you verify yeah. that? But what I want to do is, because I know you're into this stuff, is I want to start using at least one of these two dashboards that I've used kind of to get started. I've wired them for Web3. They've got some databases attached to them. But they're just like, I've, I've waited till I met a guy like you that goes, okay, this guy totally gets it. And now what we need to start doing is using these smart contracts, these tokens, these queries, these graph QLs, whatever we're going to use, and start populating these little react components to make them look like dashboards so the the, yeah. the obvious one for us is well i'm gonna do what i'm saying is i, I no, think i, mean, I, I just, should do I've this i've got i've got about a week and a half to try to do a presentation and then i've got two and a half weeks to write the dow caching for my meta which i have very little desire to do but i'm willing to do because it really needs to be done <clears throat> What I'm saying is, and I think then, I can do this, I've provided got that you and for three weeks, which I'm really thinking about doing this. So they have a a um a, a 400 acre campground that they want to build a village on, and they want they're mm -hmm. going to do a 3D map of it using photogrammetry, where you take pictures from a drone and map it. Awesome, but you man. get a height geocoding map. in there too. And they want to be able to do layers of, uh, like, planning layers. Like, go, yeah. like, the electrical system and the different buildings. And he wants to be able to do it in layers that you can turn off and on. Awesome. And so I think that I could come up with something in three weeks. He is absolutely enamored with Unreal 5. I don't, A, I don't want to write C++, and B... I okay, I'm going to stop talking about want the, this the web stuff. to be available. But I'm going to no, close these saying, windows. So that oh. that interface, so there's two that program has an interface that is this is 3D. Well, that's why I know that you're into the representation of data in graphical spaces. What yeah. I need to do at least for my objective is absolutely. I just need to start putting them in dashboards so I could be like, here's all your employees and here's everybody that has these hour tokens. Yeah. Here's who showed up to work. Just dumb it down. Yeah. And I know the smart contract that you deployed will do that. So I just have to start saying, hey, I, I think I'm going to use this one. And I either create it from a bunch of material UI elements and then back in so, the smart contracts that we're deploying well, we, or we just start, build it. You should start with the pair, these recordings that I've been making of pair programming sessions. Yes. And you have an NFT that represents the session. You have another that is the a, a review. And you can have multiple reviews. And then finally, you have, assuming that it passes review, then you mint your hour tokens for however much, how, the length of time of the video. But so you can do yeah, it I mean, automatically. I'll, I'll, I'll roll with that one. I'm just going to take the one that's the simplest for me to demonstrate. Because remember, if I'm going out and I'm trying to get people to adopt this technology through metagame, I have to 
speak in their language, whoever they are. Let's say it's a soccer team, but I'm not going to deal with them. It's like, well, who are your players and who scored the most goals? Oh, wow. okay. Well, every goal that was scored, they get an NFT. And this dashboard right here is going to have all the players' names because remember, we gave them a public private key pair at the beginning of the season. Sure. And now we just query the database and it goes, oh, 10 tokens, 10 goals. You're the star of the team. And but now just take that use case and just start applying it towards everything, human resources, you know, yeah. employees. I've got, you I've know, got one, quick, one quick note. Yes. When you're, when you're, you can usually derive the public key from the private key. So you just have to say private key. Okay. You know, private it's key. not they a key. You have to give out the whole key pair because you, you can derive the public key. I'm sorry. I okay. got distracted. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to close these because what I need to do is feel comfortable because you're you, we're there. I mean, here's the start. Here's all the data. I just need to come up with a design and say, well, what sort of elements do I want to put in here? And the very easy one is me just doing a, a simple horizontal bar graph that goes, oh, token o owner, you know, because we already query that if I just go click this. And then it's going to say, how many tokens do they own? And right now it's all one. I, because would, have, all I would do cumulative hours and do these videos. So I'll do take, it. Take the videos and I can upload them. Well, the thing is, so the con conceptually, there's supposed to be a first round review. I want to keep track of as you're watching the video in the UI that I want to provide for doing the video watching. Uh -huh. I, I want it to keep track of what has been seen. And so I want for every part of the video to have been seen by at least three trusted parties before it's released to for general review. I want eventually for anyone who wants to, to be able to comment on it. But initially I need to be able to catch stuff like information that should be private. So the, da the data to me at this point, it's less important of me demonstrating how NFTs can actually work where each token represents a thing. I don't, if it's an hour, well, an hour that they watched yeah. our videos, whatever. As long as you and I are on the same page about what I'm trying to do, we're going to finish metagame achievements and then metagame will start using it. I am then going to take that exact same thing and I'm going to start to skin it down into the most simple terms so we can start to use it as a use case. And I think that starts with what we want to do, which is today, I think we let's deploy a clean one that just says, I, I don't even know if it needs to say meta. Let's do one that says metagame master or metagame, you know, I OG want, or okay, something like that. Let's make it so that you, it can be whatever you want it to be. I, what I think you should do, I think that the best plan of attack here is for you to fork the repository which or, I did. So I have, so I have chiefs right now and I have chiefs private label. So I have those here and here. I'm kind of ahead of you right there. And so I'm running chiefs private so, label on the right hand side. Shit. And, okay, but we want to finish metagame let me today. Let me tell okay. you something yes. real quick. Yes. So it, next JS generates the static version of the site. Well, you, you're comfortable deploying to Vercel though. I'm going to go to Vercel. That's the next okay, thing well, we need to get to. Like, never I have mind. To, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to worry. Yeah. There's a problem with the, the static version of the site. Then you don't necessarily have to... I just have to stay it. updated with the code that you and I have got to stay in alignment that if the one that metagame is using for achievements, if the code changes, I have to be either on a fork or, or in a, a separate repo no, or, a or a different... Branch. I think that we, you can simply have a branch within... I will do whatever you want me to do, I but I don't want to be fine. picking up cred in metagame because people are going to have a problem with that. If I'm constantly coming up with private label metagame achievements, if all of a sudden want, now I'm in the source cred if deal. If you want us to cut off your um, branch, yeah, we can. We can drop the. We can change the weights on a branch by branch basis. Like the assets mm -hmm. repository, you earn like one XP for hundreds and hundreds of things it's tiny it's like a tenth of every of the normal okay is as long as you're comfortable with it because when i look at achievements i know who built this and it's you you built it i just want you to know what i'm going to do to exploit it because i need I people care. to start using it and like, lead them into I, metagame no, this solves if this didn't solve a problem for me as well i would not have spent as much time as i have spent on it gotcha so you and i are on the same page yeah so can we just dry run, kind of just talk about it? I don't think anything needs to get changed, except I did find out a problem here that I was able to overcome. If you load this page clean and you 
put a limit and an offset or a visible list, it only queries the first 10 and gives you one through 10. If you then refresh the screen, it will then go back to the query and then, so if I had numbers in here, then it would query it a second time. The way around it is you could just say, start it with 10. It's going to give me the 10 and then I'm going to set my query after that. So it's like a two-step process. I so if you want to fix I, that. Lost me. Hang on. I'm, I'm lost. Okay. I'm completely lost. Okay. Sorry. So what were you talking about? You have to reload the page? Yeah. So let's say that I want uh, limit 10, no offset, no visible list. You would think it would give me one through 10, right? Uh -huh. well, why did it give me two, six, and 10? So something is stubborn, right? Could, well, do you want to turn view permission tokens on by default? Oh, sorry. Let, 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 yeah. Okay, so now it gives me 1 through 10. So now if I go 2, 3, 4, everything should get picked up, which I think it will now because it's already loaded the 10. And so if I go to view, it should just give me 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it should. We didn't. Have, no, you put it in the offset. Didn't you? Oh, sorry. I was like, that should work. Which I, I which I think it will give me two, three, and four. But yeah, if I, I start it fresh, so it will give me two, three, four. <laughs> but if I start from fresh and I go, show me 10, two, three, four. Well, actually, that was a bad. So I'm going to say limit 10, and I'm going to give it an offset. And then I'm going to say, well, that's going to be 22, 23, 24. Well, let's go to make sure we pick them up. So that's... And so what I think is going to yeah, happen... Hang on, click view permission tokens, just in case they're permission tokens. Okay. Mm. Got 21. This is 21, so I mean it's... Is there a space in front of 22? No, it's yeah, it's a whole bunch of them, isn't it? So it's close. You know, it's like I'm, I'm totally happy. I can do a no, jump, but then it's I like, oh, no, see, now it's giving me 10, but off. I can now over... No, That's but weird. here's the fix. So now if I ran it again, I think they show up. Because now it's queued up 10 that it's going to choose from. And I think it's just in... Yeah, see, now it fixed it. So I think that it's just this, like, I can work around it. It's no big deal. I think you've done a masterful yeah, job here. Yeah. But if you wanted to fix it, it's taking those 10 and querying those first and goes, oh, you want to work with these 10. Hang on. Do and, you, you don't yeah. have OBS. Do you have OBS? Yeah. Um, can you start it and record, like a three minute video that just does what you just did. And yeah, I'll issue. do that later, but I've got a bunch okay, of stuff well, loaded in OBS with a video that shows me what you just showed me. I, I will understand or whoever has. Yeah. I'll vote go screen it or something after our call. Cause I feel like we're kind of crunched for time. Cause I don't want to step on Aaron's time with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you saw that, but obviously there's a workaround. So I don't even think we want to code that right now. Um, so, yeah, let's deploy a clean one. And then what I want to do is let's deploy a clean one, call it metagame master or whatever, metagame season six. It's and let's clear out all the tokens, show me the process one time, and then let's mint one super user token or two, one for you and one for me, or and then I want only those tokens to be in the smart contract, which is Oh, and then we need to make one token because that one token then spins up four like permission tokens, right? Yeah. I remember like doing one process here mints like five things, but I want the smart contract to be almost empty. With that, I'm going to start minting the NFT tokens for MetaFest that are going to gate the event. So the first few tokens minted on it are going to be pure. I'll do I one could, for every metagame player. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That's the thing. Like, I could add a, an option to not have it do those other tokens. And that wouldn't be difficult. It's just, yeah. It's just, no, I because have, I can I turn have... them off now. No, it's like now that they're in there, they're, it's well, your what contract I really supercharged. Want, what I really want to do is when a token is minted for the maintainer, I want to pass in a list of roles. And I want to have on that, that minting page what permission tokens should be granted to the maintainer.
there's a maintainer for the contract. It doesn't have to be the person who minted it, but it is general. That would be great. Anytime I can be armed with a little bit more information about the tokens on the smart contract, it, it's a good thing. And and you got me close enough where at least what's querying on the screen is something that I can be in control of. Either it's going to be a permission token or not. And so I'm there. But if you want to do that, I will spend the next 40 minutes just doing that with you. Okay. But I do think that we need okay. a clean one. So we should deploy well, a clean no. one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let, Let's make your change. We should write. No, 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 a speaking... test. Go ahead. We should write a test. You know how to do okay. that now. <laughs> kind of, yes. Yeah, I mean, but, you, but we can write a, a, a chai is the language that the tests are written in. A chai test. Okay. And yeah, I'll just do it with you. You know, because if I muddle around, I won't be able to get my stuff definitely. done in time. Okay, so. Uh, so this is the one. This is the. the let's just I have two versions now. A private right label now. one that we're not going to mess with today. But at least we're going to do a fresh one, and you're going to show me how to insert the smart contract and not to mess with the <laughs> read as proxy, write as proxy. All that stuff's a little bit muddled up. But I let's want, go for it. The task that I would like you to accomplish is I want you to add in the scripts section of the package.json for the in packages UI. Packages UI, package.json. Packages UI, package.json. In the scripts section, I would like you to add, we'll call it Vercel. We'll call the task Vercel. Perfect. And I would like it to be whatever needs to be run to deploy the, this next app to Vercel. Do you want to see my Vercel setup? I, I want you to put a command in there that deploys it to Vercel. Oh, it says Vercel. Literally, I mean... The, Literally, well, dash dash prod if, if I wanted to go fire off to my domain. That's it, dude. It's so awesome. I love Vercel. But, I mean, don't you... Have, it has to somehow know where to put it. Like it, it knows. So you do an init in the. Nope. I don't do any. Sometimes I have to build. Sometimes sense. I have to that's, use. It's that's crazy. Literally impossible. Like it has, it's literally. It I'll show you. It I could deploy. Just read your mind and know what the URL should be for that. Oh, you're talking about the domain? Yeah, I have them all set up. It's like I buy my domains through Vercel too. It's like they've got a really good domain interface. Cool. I mean, I'll just show it to you. I'll take you through it. Nothing's going to get exposed that I don't care about people seeing. So I bought Chiefs. Got... I bought Via Autos for the courier system. I bought Autos. I bought Via.Autos. Via.Autos. Okay. And I'm, I'm telling you, Vercel has been the one thing in my life over the last five years that has been super consistent. So I just took yours... I yeah. made those, like, when I did my private label of it, I just took yours, so deployed it, it, it literally with Vercel, you know? And so here, and to make it, I even put it achieve-nfts.vercel. No, I guess I never put this out, out on one of my domains, but I could. I could just go into one so, of my domains. Yeah. And I, yeah, maybe I put it on here. I think if you go to this domain, that's where that private, yeah, because I was doing a private label demo for Lexus. Uh -huh. There that it makes is. Sense. That makes sense. And so if I want to add a new domain on it, I just have to pick one of my domains and I own FreeWeb3 so I could be like just Bullock, you know, FreeWeb3. And yeah. I add it and I add that after production. So all I yeah. do is I go Vercel and Vercel then puts it on one of their servers with, you know, Vercel.12345, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's sort of a but test it knows deployment. because you've set up this configuration ahead of time and it's basing it off the branch name? How does it know? Yeah, not, ahead of, not even ahead of time. I, all I do is go into the current branch I'm – working on which you've taught me about that recently i'm like oh it really deletes the files and added new file i literally go into there and i type in vercel and then the ui the um the command line starts asking me questions like oh okay do you want okay. this to be part we'll of an existing that. project yes do that yep oh okay um yeah you know, so i'll do it from in here so cheese i'll just go vercel and then it's going to deploy it Oh, and this one, maybe I already deployed. Yeah, see, it's already deploying it. It's deploying to that thing I just showed you. It's literally deploying it to this one right here. Okay. And, and so, so it's not even asking me any other questions, to be honest. I'd have to go into a fresh one, like the one I just cloned, and do it again. So do you want to see that part? Yeah, load up the Vercel app. Um, no, the private label one that I said. Make I just, it, I just forked this today. Make it larger. Okay. 
All I did was fork the exact same repo that we worked on last night. Okay. okay. So if I wanted to deploy this, but I might need to build, this could get a little cumbersome, but oh, so no. it could air out, but I would just do Vercel, um, set up and deploy. Yes. Which scope? Tenfinny. Exist to an existing? No. What's your project name? Uh, use case specific chiefs. Fine. Where's the code located? Okay. And now it's going for it. And that's it. Uh -huh. So it's, e so it's either now going to break at the end and give me an error and give me some logs. Yeah. And in 90% of the time, I've been able to fix the logs because it has something to do with if you deployed it on it or you wrote it for Next, so, uh, it goes, dude, you got to tell me it's a React website, it's a Next, you know. Your, so sometimes I have to go into Vercel. Your build What's command that? should be yarn build. But, right. And so that's what it probably will come well, back and goes, no, 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 no. Well, if it runs NPM, it, it might generate a bunch of files you don't want it to, or at least one file, like the lock file. But it, uh, it, does, it, it yeah. also put stuff in node modules. Like, is it going to run NPM? Yeah, well, yeah, it runs it like it's, I guess, from its side. You know, it's like it knows okay. that I'm on. Okay. When it's building. That's what's app. great about Vercel. It's like it just handles all of that. You know, I always have my node modules folder locally. I always that I expect yeah. it to ex but it's, respect it's the Git ignore, but server. I know it doesn't. It's just getting the source. Like with GitHub, yeah. I'm building it and then sending the build to GitHub. But it's yeah. doing so, the building oh, on shit. its end. So this this one maybe is going to error because I got a bunch of errors. Well, it says twelve um, days ago you did. 19 days ago, it was successful. And then I think that this is when I was screwing around and I got a hold of you and said, look, I don't want to mess it anything up. It status you know? is ready. Is it up? Or, but it hasn't deployed for 19 days. No, it's up. But I don't know what those errors were for because, yeah, it's up. So here it is. It's got the picture I swapped out. And this says chiefs.nfts.versell.app. But it doesn't, have, it doesn't have the the filtering form. No, because I did this 19 days ago. We only okay, fixed so that this yesterday. This is the 19 days ago version, right? So uh, if this deploys do you want like to push properly, that branch to GitHub and do a connected Git repository. Not today, really. What I want to do is make sure that the Metafest stuff is like dialed in, and this is all. So did it work for cell That's prod? What I'm yeah, saying. so it worked. I didn't see a. Um... Well, it'll be in there now. Okay. I, th I think we just stepped on it. It's like now, yeah. Let me. It looks like it went, which it would be says, awesome. But it says the same chief's use case. Oh, okay, right. It's a, this is a brand new one, but I need to do this first. Let me just send it to Prod right now. In the background. So that is all I would need to do there, and let me go back into Vercel. Because I expect it to have the data from. Yeah, it's not going to be there. It's going to be right here. Use case specific. Well, but load Sorry, it up. I... load it up and yeah. does it have? Well, it, yeah, it does have the same data. Maybe. Well, I want to see. Uh, that doesn't look right. But it's still building. It says. Okay. Um, but then I'm going to go in here, and then this is where I'll put the domain on it. Um, so what do you want me to call? This will just be like. <laughs> Private label one, Chiefs. Private label one or something, Chiefs. Um, Dis Chiefs. What are you? What's your top level domain? Uh, I got a bunch. Um, this one, Free Web Three. I thought that I think that's the most appropriate Chiefs, for where we're trying to go with all this. Chiefs free dot, Web Three. Chiefs dot Free Web Three. I guess. It sort of flows. Chiefs dot Free Web Three. Dot com. Do you like it? Yeah. Dismenter, <laughs> dismental. I Dismenter? got. I, I got um, my and this is my ENS address now is trwb dot live and it stands for the revolution will be live in the idea of it being live streamed to where people are able to tune in and watch. Because it's all this stuff's public. You're going to have to advertise that acronym. Otherwise, people aren't going to have any idea what it is. It's trwb.live. And it, you I, you can now have any DNS name as an ENS address. And so that's an, a valid ENS address. Do you want to be Dismenter? Do you want to be, uh, what do we call it? Well, Dis this is, what is this for? Just to show you. You asked me to do it. You said, show me the Vercel thing. No, I want to see Vercel. I want to see the app is what I want to see. It can be under that other domain name. 
Yeah, I okay. See that. I no, it's, see I, I that. thought you said, well, where are you going to put it? It's like, so I'll put it on the domain. It says it's ready. Um, you should be able to see it there, right? Okay. Oh, I'm, I don't, yeah, something went weird down here. Which never happened. This is a nice interface. I like for sale. And I like Next.js. I, I like this whole pairing a company, especially. A so I think I would go build it now. This is what I ran into before. It, like it thinks maybe it's something else. So I would now go and run the build command. It ran, and then let's try it again. If it run NPM build, if it ran NPM build, it should have failed. I never have to tell Vercel what to do. You Sometimes it errors, it and then I simply the build and then I simply build, and then it looks for the build, it looks for the build folder it needs, and I think maybe that's what it grabs because those deployments go quick. When I'm just typing in Vercel, it could be like a five minute thing. But if I've had the build folder there, it's sometimes it's two minutes, three minutes. So I'm assuming that it's smart enough to say, yeah, 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 Scott, I'm not grabbing all this stuff. I'm going to your build folder. And that's what it grabs and that's what it de deploys. Um, I've had that problem with mono repos sometimes. But in this case, let me just run, it, since we're here, let me just run that command um, of the build. build. Like you, you caught it. Yeah, but and see, it's just, yeah, see where it says, um... Does it need to be hard hat build or some weird thing like no, it's that? Yarn, like, it should just be yarn build, I think. Or do you want me to check the file? It's Yeah, it might be UI colon build. Let's see, that's going to do the next build for me, and it knows how to look for the next build. So, yes. if we So, let's just do yarn build. Okay. Yeah, because we're in the subdirectory. Oh, so I have to do yarn UI build? No, you would need to be in the pack. Yeah, UI okay. colon okay. build, because I think in the root package.json it's ui colon build see if it happens here okay so we'll let that go and then back to what we were talking about to try to accomplish in the next 20 minutes or so pray that aaron's late he's been pretty prompt though huh generally well that was easy right like well, these are some of the same ones we were messing with yesterday, but let's see if it'll deploy anyway. Vercel is kind no, of unforgiving can't. with some warnings. I mean, is it? You tried to build. Did the build not fail? That was the build. No, that was the type check. I, I think the oh. build is comes after the type check, but if the type check fails, the build doesn't run. Oh, shit. Well, it just changes. It looks like you got three turns. Uh, single quote strings is all you have. Token filter form. I thought we changed that. I it's thought we on did the too. Imports. It's almost certainly on the imports. Oh, that was. Uh, do you have you pulled? Yeah, I just grabbed this today. For me, but you, since okay, so you since because we, we fixed that at one point. Yes. Oh well, I don't know. Well, I think those are the I imports. Pulled it. Those are the imports to token filter form. And we changed those. I mean, because we got it to build because we pushed it to GitHub. But you would have had to push it out to master because what I did is I cloned master. Is but you. Uh, well, do you want to do you want to find out? Yeah, I'll do just, get branch so right now. Go to that other directory. Do a CD space tilde slash. CD yeah, space, do, but do CD space tilde slash. Oh, you've already got it open. Uh, type L and hit enter. Creating filtering. At, uh, yeah, to the index. So it's, uh, yeah, we're adding filtering to the index. Um, type a slash. And then what string were we looking for? Uh, it was uh, it was in. Strings must use single quote. It was what in file? token it, filter token form. Token filter form. Yeah. Search. Do, do a capital token capital filter. And hit enter. So, uh, are those double quotes around the? No. The the imports are single quoted in that. Make sure that did you push? Did you get push? Yesterday for you, GP. Yeah. Well, this is master on. Oh, this is a forked repository that you're dealing with. 
No, 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 no. This is the other repository, not this one. But the, the other right. One. Chiefs should be the one that we were working on yesterday. I didn't change anything, but maybe I didn't push it to you. You know, I thought I did. That's it. what I'm saying. Yeah, do Okay, so but we'll this one, GP I and hit th enter real quick. This one here, which I'm just going to uh, clear. This is one that I went out to the achievements repo uh -huh. directly today and I cloned it because I said, this is the one I'm going to talk to you about that I'm going to start private labeling. So, so if I pushed GP, to you yesterday and you didn't merge GP, it to master, what? You're you're in, in the Chiefs repository. You're writing to master. All I've done is all I get pulled from what you had up this morning. But you didn't merge pushed. my Good. changes Will yesterday to master. you in the other tab just so that I know for sure that it won't work? Yes. Okay. And when you do a pull in... This tab. Get pull? No, just, yeah, get pull's fine. <sighs> Type L and hit enter. So, it, oh, yeah, to, but that's that was the type. I bet if you type slash and type token filter that it will find. I don't know what. Let's look at this. Maybe this isn't the error that I think it is. Yeah, there's, uh, there's single quotes and they're committed. I don't know what's going on. So you on. merged it to Master last night. And that's how you got it on the Chiefs. No, you wrote yesterday. to Master. You committed to Master. Oh, the that's right. We've, been, we've just been writing to Master because it's not yet well enough developed to create issues and whatnot. It's getting close, though. Okay, so what I want to do to to prove to you that Vercel works, I just want to build, use that, use that, well, build fix, command in order for the, next edit token filter and fix those errors. Oh, and I'll tell you the other way that I made it, make it work sometimes on repos like this, where I know there's a UI branch, I go and do my Vercel directly within that folder. What? And you, you see it, you, you know what I mean? So the the, build, sometimes the build, if the build is failing for us. It should also be failing for Vercel. I'm just if saying that it's a workaround that I've the done same build process. And it's failing for us. It should be failing for Vercel. Sometimes I am able to do my Vercel command directly within the UI folder, and it then builds there. Yeah. The, and everything works. When I try to edit do Vercel the from the top filter. level. I don't understand why you haven't edited the token filter file yet. Because <laughs> we gotta we gotta keep that aspect moving as well. Uh, and then find the errors because it was only four errors. Or, yeah, and okay, it's not the single quotes on the imports. What is it? Uh, do, yeah, uh, no, no, do it was yarn, yarn, yarn build. build, yarn build. And I'm gonna do it if from within that folder. And yarn UI colon build, or you well, can CD to packages UI and but UI colon build will work. I'm gonna do it that way. You just said CD uh, packages. Yeah, UI. UI. And from my recollection, as long as it successfully builds within this subdirectory, I just Vercel from here, and it knows where to take it. Every we'll once see. in a while, I have to go into Vercel because it's going to say, oh, you're a next build? You, don't you want to be a React build? And so I'm like, line, can I click React? Line one, line okay. two, line three, and line four. There's something wrong. You're in... Token filter form. Token filter form. Line one, 28. I see a single quote here. <laughs> How do you do? Okay, so... Mm. So it already has a build folder or something in here that it, there's a stubborn build. Hang on, hang it. on, hang on, hang on. Have you okay. changed in VS Code? Have you changed directories? Uh, thank you for having me slow down and pay attention. Open. Well, it's the, I mean, it's just, it's got to be something like there's no magic. Yeah. To <laughs> there's no way around it. Ta-da. Okay. I still don't get why the git 
pull. I don't. Yeah, that's. I don't care, honestly. If we can just get it to build and go, I'll be happy. Yeah, I'm happy too. I did like, I want to practice with you. I want to practice giving you syntax rules, and I don't know if you'll remember them all or if you want to write them down as they come up. I will. No, I'll study them because there's a lot of times that you guys talk, and I, I'm like, I, I should know those with words. ATIG, it's so much easier if I don't have to say space every, like, space. Yeah. Was there <laughs> anything it, else we see in there? It's very consistent, though, how I do spacing. I, those were the only red marks. I, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Gating. This is on index. Pages index. Where, why are the changes not in there? That's weird. So pay is pages index? Yeah. Yeah, pages index. Okay, 21. so we... Yeah, hang on. So uh, let me look at that. Gating is oh, never shit. reassigned. Should I just so, copy it out of the no, proper file? No, you should change okay. the let on line 20 to const. Okay, so you remember them. Yeah, well, I, I remember this, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that, oh, wait, no, okay, because then visible, is it visible? Let's see, gating limit param and offset param weren't reassigned, so visible is. So you have to go down to line 49. It's actually line 51 is where visible is reassigned. So put on line 49, put a new line after the brace. Do uh, um, let visible, do let visible space equals visible param. And then go up to the, uh, um, the, where the, Gating equals false, visible, limit. After visible, on line 21, put, after visible, put colon, space, visible, param. This is what I thought we should have written last time. I just didn't take the time to go and change it. I thought we did. No, we did visible param down lower. We did okay. it as the lower variable, which isn't really consistent. So you now need to change... Visible, yeah, visible equals visible. What's it? Why doesn't it like about visible? Cannot find it. Let string undefined. We have let on line fifty. Is there a like a missing closed brace or something? Yeah, no. Take this. There's no space between the if and the open paren. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, just move line 50 up a line. Ooh, because, oh, yeah, put visible line 57, change visible to visible param. Looks good now. Yeah, I think that's it. And I think that's all the errors. Oh, nope. I should know that it's going to be the same errors that we fixed before. Let's just see. This is disperse. Pages disperse. Disperse. 139. Oh, back yeah, ticks. this was the back ticks. You got to... And, and then app. pages underscore app, yeah. And this is an import. I remember this one too. It's uh, line 12. And no semicolon. That's that. Okay. Give it another whirl. Um, yarn build. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so while that goes, as we're running, winding down, um, we were talking about this. I gave you my vision of the dashboards. You were talking about taking, oh, we were going to redeploy a new one. So we're going to do this. We're going to redeploy a clean one with a couple u super user tokens, a token, and then the subsequent tokens that come out with it. And you said the last thing we we're talking about is you said we could turn that off and i said no no no, leave it on because i have the ability to filter them out based on a demo and that's kind of where we were at so maybe nothing needs to get built at this point or if you think there's something we need where i'm able to click a token i'm able to see everybody that owns that token or holds that token and it represents that in a graph be it a bar graph or something else that's the only thing i can see right now that might might help how does so you're saying a graph the who the owners are is represented? Yeah, just a graph? simple graph. We already have queried this stuff. If so, I go to token sixty five, it's going to show all the token holders, and it might say that Scott has two of them. Well, that told me right okay. there that I can hold more than one eleven fifty five, yeah. and and now we can immediately start to roll into what you were talking about. Is yes. these tokens don't re represent an access token for crypto voxels? It 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 represents your credibility and hours that you've participated I want, I towards want our literally console. Literally hours spent. I want there to be yeah. a base record of hours spent, and for people to be compensated a minimum amount for their just for their time, and nothing else. Was there still an sure. error so in we there? missed one. We missed one. Token filter four on four. I missed that. Ah, but I did. Okay, so do you want to try to do that till Aaron gets back? Because I told I'm... him I left him a DM and told him to drop into this channel. Okay. And we'll I mean, if he that. worked twelve hours with you, he is he is ready to go. But I I, I don't know if he's just yeah. I don't know if he's going to do that again. No, he's not, because I'm not going to do it again. Because <laughs> you're not going to do it. Yeah. That was, that was a lot. I mean, it was, it was yeah. fine. I, it was very chill and low-key, but, yeah, it was 12 hours. Okay, so then if that's the case, I'm going to chill with you, and then you let's do what you think is the next cool thing. And if you've called it quits and you want to move on from – Chief, no, I, totally I have, understand. No, I'm, I'm task based, and currently, I want to get you deployed to to start grinding out these private no, label ones. Just, in addition. I want you to be, yeah, I want you to deploy your private label site and to have it have it run against a new contract, and have me understand that if I have to come back and say, ah, new use case, that I will not mess anything up, and it's it's stand up in a new repo or it's under MetaFam branch, I don't care. It yeah. just needs to be what you're comfortable with because it's not like I'm going to screw around with the code outside of images, maybe some forms and some interesting ways to to twist around the the data that we're already querying. I, that's totally within my wheelhouse to do that. And then I'll keep up to date with you and it goes, look, here's a new one that I deployed. And then you're like, that's one looks cool or you might have some ideas. Yeah. And then that's kind of fun for us to continue on with the NFT journey, but we can also shift gears then and do the, um, the hackathon or, you know, this I'm other still deciding or... like there's just, I really think I'm probably going to do the three JS 3d model of land project. That's what's sounding the most attractive right now. I was really enjoying playing with the steam deck, but if I'm going to do it for three weeks, I really, I think the land just has, if I can get, if I can pull it off, to where you can just drag and drop in models on land, which doesn't sound that hard, then it could be really neat. Okay, I think that this is going to deploy now. If I don't know if you wanted to watch it, but it's, no, I, I think see, you'll. I want to see a loaded site. Is what okay, I uh, see. link to the existing project. No, because it's going to, I've done a bunch of UIs. What's your project name? UI. This is now going to be Chiefs Private or uh, Chiefs PL for private label. That's okay. what it's called. Directory. It should be right there. Now, hang on. Yeah, I want to see if, what did it ask. Hang on. I said, okay. hang on. Why do you not hang on when I say It's, it's going to be there for a bit. Don't worry. No, it, but it said um, build command is what? Next build. It, it does next it on its build. own. Next build. Okay, so it recognized it as a next app. Yeah. And, then, and so now this should go. This should go. I'm just going to cross my fingers that on the other side it'll be there for us. But we can go back on what we were 
talking about what you'd like to do with querying for hours right now, but let's deploy a brand new one. And then our first token will be hourly token. So I said, yeah. if we, okay, and that's it. It's like, that's well, our new no, token. No, and no, you no, and no, I will, no, 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 hang on, you know? hang on. The yeah. first one is the token for the session. So oh. an NFT representing the a pair programming session and, and has a link to the recording of the session in its metadata. Yes, I want that token to be the first token on this brand new smart contract we're going to deploy. And it's going okay. to be called Metagame's Awesome Hourly Token, or it's going to be called no, whatever the hell no, we want to call on, it. Hang on, hang on. See, you're not, yeah. you're not getting it. <laughs> the, no, no, I'm sorry. Token, yeah, that's that not the token right represents the session. There are then tokens representing reviews. The hourly token is given after it goes through, both is submitted and goes through review then eventually an hourly token is minted and that is the hourly I'm sorry token. I spoke too quickly so it's like I'm the really third just token down the line is the hourly token I'm just talking about where we're going to start today is there will be a token that will have a heading on it and it'll be somewhat related to what you just talked about it'll be a smart yeah. contract to track contributions it'll session it'll represent a pair programming session so there you go so this will be the NFT mint pair programming NFT minting con smart contract when we mint this you and i i'm just gonna <laughs> type what you want me to type because we're gonna have a smart contract all of the tokens within that smart contract are going to be pointed squarely about the use case that you're talking about okay okay error error shit so do you want me to stick with this until we get it yeah i want for you to, to launch a site because we still have I to... launch them all the time. That's what I'm saying. I'm not worried about it. I will get well, this to, to launch. To, okay, do you know how to clear out the contract, the old contract? Well, let's see what they're telling us because th this doesn't look like much. I've had some of these that's a ton of stuff. Yeah. Hey, AK. Um, hey, guys. Yeah, just, just popping we, in. I, we can switch over. Yeah, I, I look, can I get him through? He is trying to deploy yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a clean version of this con of this site. So that he can customize it with his own graphics and stuff. And we're trying to do a clean contract. It looks like we're just down to this one thing, really. Just this Apollo yeah. client. You want to read it? Yeah. Yeah, what did yeah. you say? So why don't you get, maybe me and Tom, Tommy, you want to jump into the other Revester and we'll talk for a couple minutes? Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, cool. So we'll just top there and, yeah, you could... But you guys, hop, hop back in here because I know this is your time, Aaron. We're trying to well, finish I'm up I'm going to go over there when we get done. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, we just the carbon stuff maybe should be... We could talk in the future. Yeah, yeah. It should be separate from metagames and stuff. Um, well, cool. this is all uh, under the pair, the purview of the pair programming achievements right. thing like this is this the pair programming is a is a thing too that's not has nothing sure. to do with Part what's being done it's the recordings and all that stuff but i'm absolutely willing to switch over to your server Okay. Yeah. Whatever. The metagame part of this for us is just a, at this point it's a skin, you know, and yeah, metagame's yeah, yeah. going to get use out of it, but we have bigger fish to fry with pair programming and stuff. Correct. Cool. Right. Okay, so we'll see you guys in Revestor. If you guys say the word chain link, ping me. If not, I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Chain link. Chain link. I'm here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go into this file. This bullet. What? I can't read that error. It's too small. Oh, uh, the error says failed to compile <laughs> right here. Uh, it gives okay, me the I can file. Read it now. I can read it now. Okay. Um. Yeah, I was wondering. We are using Apollo client, right? Command yarn run build. So run yarn run build. It should be the same uh, thing as yarn build. I thought. Okay, and then it says uh, can't find module. I mean, what I would da, 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 do da, da, da. is make sure that it's in the package.json. Or maybe I should run this from the parent and not within the UI uh, subdirectory. Well, yarn run build would be run from within that, that subdirectory. You should be okay, okay to do that. Try running yarn run build just to be 100% certain that that doesn't do something different. Within the UI subdirectory, yarn, yarn run r build. Yarn run build, okay. And then we should also, oh, well, should hold on. Should I clear out the build uh, no, subdirectory that are probably made? It, it, don't worry about it? it okay. I would, I would just run it. Because sometimes when I would deploy in Vercel, I would get something different 
um, published publicly, even though the the my local local host was showing me like different images and stuff. And then I go to Vercel so, and it was like scroll up. taking old images. Scroll up. And up and up and up to the errors. There's some errors if you go all the way up. There's some. Okay. So that was out. That was beforehand. Oh, that's the Is last the, command. That's the last command. Does it look good? I saw no more errors and I saw it build. So, but why is Yarn Run building fault failing on the server? So, how I'm is Russell getting more time. this code? Did you? Do you have? Is everything committed and whatnot? I haven't touched anything oh, today. Check the package.json and make sure add Apollo slash client is in it. Uh, in the the one in UI, right? In, in or UI. pages in UI, yes, I think. Okay. Yeah. Scroll oh, Paul down is not sure in there. Not, make sure it's not in the other one either. It shouldn't be. So scroll down to the dependencies. So it's only yeah, it's got no wait. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I think that should be in the UI. It's, it's probably oh, it's right here, oh, Apollo client. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be in the UI directory. So go into packages UI and run yarn add add Apollo. Well, actually, first from the root, run yarn remove add Apollo slash client. At Apollo slash client. Yeah, and it should vanish from that file. Now, CD to packages UI, and yarn add to Apollo. Is it one out? Slash. Still can't. Is it that? I Slash. can't remember if it's two Ps or one. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I would have said something. If, 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 Apollo uh, client, we aren't at Apollo client. Looks like that's it. Yeah. I like the little Simba heads. I do too. You wrote all that, right? You put all that no, in the link. No, well, it's stuff? just no. an option. It's just an option you set in the config file. <laughs> I like that you do that. It keeps it entertaining. Yeah. Okay. Even so with your, your ASCII, your now, characters, I'm like, okay, here I, he goes. Okay. I think so. it'll work now. It just Yarn has, run. It has to be commit. Oh, you run Vercel, and Vercel, like, Clones the it has if it's not committed into Git, how does it get the code? Yeah, that's like none of my stuff. It's like I'm so inexperienced and scared of Git. Still, it's like I gotta thank you for making me more comfortable with it. But I still yeah. think I'm gonna mess things up. That's it why I just like end tool. up making what, a bunch of clones. Unless you really, unless you force like force push or force whatever, it almost never deletes data. Mm -hmm. And so it's it, you, most things are reversible. Yeah, and then you have to know how to reverse it. And that's a guy like you. Well, yeah, it's like but... me. I've always like stare, stayed at the edge of that cliff where you've jumped in and goes, oh, no, I know how to get out of it. And I'm like, I don't even get that close. I worked it's... for Miltech on a visualization. So back in the day, this is like, this was a, like junior year of undergrad. I had an internship for a year with Miltech, where I worked on a 3D visualization of a rocket. So they're going to shoot, missiles are going to come towards us, and we're going to shoot them down with other missiles. Are you familiar with uh, this ex-military Yeah, that, that, that makes me feel comfortable. But that that existed. Like in the 80s and 90s, they tried yeah, to do Yeah, the whole Star Wars program. And so I worked for a military contractor who was responsible for vis creating 3D visualizations and other metrics and stuff, too, of these failed because they never hit the other missile missile intercept attempts. And so I worked on these 3D models. At one point, I did an RM dash. And this was after, like, a, I, I pulled an all-nighter. I was there all night. I got this because I wanted to do it in Java 3D and blah, blah, blah. They were doing That's visual, work ethic for you. They were in Visual Basic, and I wanted to switch to Java 3D, which was all this was really new back in the day. But 
I did an R. They weren't having it. They're like, no, 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 no. Stick with our legacy programs, right? I did it. Well, Visual Basic. They they had a Visual Basic component that, in like Visual Basic Five component that was a black box to us, but that did 3D rendering, and that's what they were using to do their 3D. And I did an RM dash R dot, which, if you're familiar with that, will remove everything. So I and I this was before Git. This was before I actually Subversion might have existed at this point in time, but I completely blo- and I told them that my computer got hit by lightning. <laughs> I don't know if they believe me or not. If I didn't tell them, I I just accidentally deleted like seventy hours worth of work. Right, and they're going to be like, yeah, well, if it did or didn't, it's probably going to disappear by the time we get over there anyway. Okay, yeah. it gave us another error, uh, but at least it's ones that we can probably fix. Uh, pages app underscore. Hang on, this they're is telling completely me, new to me. Yeah. Uh, Hang 34. on, wait, 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 wait. React node is not assignable to Vercel slash path zero slash node modules at types React. DOM node modules types react index type open brace close brace is not assignable to a type react node type react dot react node that's very confusing and the weird thing is that I know that I was able to deploy this 12 days ago. So it has to be something that you recently worked on. Uh, we added Apollo provider recently. Okay. Um, do I think that, that, yeah, it looks right. Go into that file real quick. It's over here. Pages They're saying the... it's somewhere around here. 33 component okay, or something. So, Component is passed in to app. That looks fine to me. Um, hover over app props on line 19. Are we using these two? I uh, use query and GQL. No, I think they can be removed. I'm surprised. Okay, because I have also had errors when it said, I'm not going to deploy if there's anything in here that looks weird. I know. And I, even I, un- I've gotten type check errors before for unused. No, leave the comma after Apollo Provider. Okay. You leave the comma because if you come in and add a new library, the only thing that will show up red in Git will be the line that you added. Otherwise, okay. if you add a comma, that line will also be red. And so that's why you have a comma at the end. Got it. Um. So that looks so reasonable. So it used oh, to be on this app, line. Hover over app props on line 17. What? <laughs> in underscore SSG, in underscore SSP, and in underscore RTC. What the hell? Uh. Okay. Uh, can you hover over? Can you move up to app initial props? Will it let you do that? It's up. It was in the top of that pop up window. Oh, okay. So to hover and then get in app, here. Yeah, it's, app initial props. Can you right want click, me to click on it? it? Yeah. Can you right click on it? It doesn't do anything. It, that would be a nice addition to the interface if that would also. Do you want me to search for it at least? Yeah. I guess. And we can always try. That's no, not. I don't see it. No, it's. That I makes... don't think it looks through node modules by default. Well, not that it, if it's inverse anyway. cell anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I I didn't pay enough attention to where that. Oh, it's in next. Yeah, so it could find it probably. Um. That looks fine. I, and it says comp- component, next component type, next page context, any P. So let's make sure that all of our pages are um, returning next components. I think that's what it said it wanted. 
So scroll up to where the the, the top of the the function. So hang on, it's after address. So scroll down just a little bit. Yeah, it's deber it's line fifty one where it has this burst colon space next page. It wants it to be a next page. Um scroll down, is there there's no stack trace in the in the error? There's no stack trace. Uh, so my a hypothesis is that one of our pages is returning an an object, an empty object, rather than a next page. We just added the owners page. Check the owners page. So pages owners. So make we're on line 28 do export const owners colon space next page owners colon yep next page next uh capitalize page. Yep. next page and then down and arrow control. once and hit enter just once did you hit it i think you hit it twice you said down arrow yeah i wanted Not you to select so it can you control space real quick Control space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See how the that second one is the one I wanted you to select. Got it. Okay. See, and now owners is underlined because we're returning the wrong type, I'm pretty sure. So scroll okay. down to where the return statement is. That looks right. Huh. Remove line 99. Go to uh, um, the where it's underlined in, uh, for owners and hover over it. What's the error? Type string is not assignable to type react element any any. Okay, go assignable. open up open up another one of those NFTs. Like a like a disperse or edit. No, I mean, I mean in the code. So this pages disperse. And now scroll down to what's returned here. Hang on. Scroll Line. up, scroll, stop. <laughs> um, no, I'm returning a container, which is a shocker UI thing. I was thinking that maybe I had to return a, um, like, node something. I, I don't know. A node page. But it doesn't look like that's what's done. Yeah, so that's definitely a shocker UI thing. Um, go back to the, yeah. Man, this is where the error is. No, the error is in app. And it's owners. Go back to owners. Is this owners? Okay. Type. Function that returns a string or data. Hang on, I was still reading that. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Which side? Hover You're over, over here. Owners. Yeah. The error for owners is not assignable to type next page. Function compiler. I'm doing this with hops. React elements. What the hell? Um, and so what's the first, what's the outermost tag in the return statement? A box. Well, 
Well, I mean, to containerize it, or you don't think? No, that's what the no. Is. Go up and look at the uh, the import statements. Yeah, it's from Shocker UI React. Do we even need to use next page? Because I haven't yes. seen this before. Yes, I'm pretty okay. sure this is the source of the error. But can we can we get to what this is trying to do by I using? I think that a... all pages in Next need to be of Next page type. Can we just deploy this as a React? Because in Vercel, I have the choice: Next or you do a React. And sometimes I'll try to deploy a, a Next build, and it it almost deploys, and it goes. All you yeah. have to do is click one button, and I click one button, and I say re redeploy or yeah. whatever Vercel again, and it works because you have if to you say no, no, no. Run a command, run a command, but I it's an error. Like it wouldn't. It, no, no, no. It's, it's not a error. command. What I'm saying, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm saying it's, we have an error. Is what I'm saying. And so agreed. Just the error is coming wise, through right here. And I can deploy to Vercel without using Next, but I don't know exactly what we're getting out of Next Page Next. Is there another way to do it with a different component? Do imp hang on, go back to the Edit NFT again, and scroll down, scroll up to where the function is beginning. Okay, con export const edit colon next page. And so I guess it's okay because it's working in this one. Import next page from next. And that's a box. Yeah, it's the same thing, isn't it? Add, copy the head. Put a head in the box for the owners. Yeah, put a. Yeah, exactly. And then um, title, I guess. Well, let me get the close on it. Well, it closes before home link. It closes on the head ninety three. Where do you want the head to close? Ninety right after it opens. Okay. Is that and right? We can give it a title. You can put a title tag within the head tags. No, you, you, no, no. You, you changed it from right to wrong. Okay. Uh, title. Title, yep. Lowercase, all lowercase, title, indented, and it's a tag. And nested tags are indented. Uh, what page are we working on? I've forgotten. Ownership? Edit, NFTs. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, owners, NFTs. Uh, I guess just owners. Just to, just let the title be owners. I don't think this will fix it, but I, it could. So do a control space after head on 92. And hit enter. Did that have any effect on the ownership's complaint? Not so, up here. I was hoping. It's I can tell what it's saying. I don't understand what makes something a next page. Can you copy that link and paste it into Google? I don't know why I haven't asked you to do that yet. Which link? This one? No, the error. The error. Yeah, copy the error. Are you still getting? You should be getting a new error. Go to I think right. So let me let me run it again. Yeah. Yeah, we just went into the logs. So I guess it was this one that I should have opened up, or I did. I just we weren't looking at that one. I have no idea, honestly. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's moved off of Apollo Provider down to Component now. Yeah. Which, but if you look at the very uh, line, the line 180, the first 180 line, type object is not assignable to type React node. And I think that, I don't know. This is my guess. I'm still not 100% sure that this is it. Okay, I'm going to drop this in our um, 
Dungeon Walls, did you want to see it? What is it? The error, the link to this error. It's just a hyperlink that... Uh, if you hover over owners? No, I want the error... Oh, you want owners. this one, this yes. error. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think my guess currently is that this error is the root of that error. Gotcha. It's hey, not, folks. It's... Howdy. Yeah, Lux. How's Do you have any going? idea why... What makes it a next page a next page? Like, if it's got it in TypeScript, it has a next page type. What what makes that true? Uh, if it's in the pages directory. It's uh, in the pages And it's directory. automatically rooted. It gets, uh, yeah, it's automatically gets picked up by the... But I don't know what else makes it a page. Cause it's just... Uh, our current error yeah. is hover over it again, Tim Finney. I, I posted it too if you need it. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I can look at it. I can browse to wherever it is. So are you have you got the JSX element being returned? Yes. So delete that. And it may I haven't ever used the next page uh type. I haven't uh had cause to use it yet. Um, we I, well, I did it because our other pages are next pages, and I thought that maybe okay. you could add. Um, go ahead. No, I'm just just uh, having a look at uh, the code I'm working on at the moment, seeing what that how that is. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, yeah, it takes the next page props, but I don't return it. I don't specify any um, element to return. You don't return anything. So, no, I'm I'm obviously returning a a, a chakra component. Okay. But, okay, um, okay. So same same. But I'm not way. specifying that it's a JSX element. Yeah. Oh, man, we were so close, and Vercel was supposed to be so easy, and yet here we are. <laughs> well, like I said, no, it's, it, it's been easy in a lot of cases. And in this one, we made some changes with, like you said, from Apollo forward. But at least we're able to isolate because 12 days ago, and we haven't done much work to Spolik, it did deploy. Because I can prove yeah. it. I'll show you. Yeah. you know, I've already showed it to you with my weird octopus at the top. And it'll build locally. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've used it locally. Yeah. Um, I did did have a little stab at doing some styling, but I got a bit lost in the TypeScript. We um, force pushed. I hope that doesn't throw like a huge monkey in your wrench. I'll have a little. Um, I haven't tried it for a couple of days. Okay, then you might be uh, okay. It might be back because all we did is undid a commit. So to to prove to you that we can get there, do you want? Should we just comment this actual working part of the website out for right now, and then just see if we can get it to go? If you want to do that, that's fine. Well, because I'm okay moving on. Like, yeah. if we run out of time and all I have is what's on Chief.es right now, I'm, I'm cool with that. But yeah. I would love to see this go through because my next iteration of this is starting to make the private label ones, you know? Yeah. So, okay. so real, look in API. What's, what's in the API directory? Pages API. And that's what we just, I think, did yesterday. Yeah. But that's <coughs> not, that what's in the API directory isn't within what's rendered as for component for next. It's it's outside of the that concern. So it's not that. Oh, man. Um, uh. Damn. Is there a way to turn off the like screen sharing config on the repo for achievements? Because it opens up for me and it's like it's just unusable. What? Uh, like this? Huh? Like this? Yeah, what you see on my screen yeah. right now? In GitHub? No. When I when I pull down the repo and open it up in code, yeah, um, I'll show you a screen grab a sec it's like um i have the worst worst vision imaginable <laughs> uh the, the size of the font i'm, I'm not tracking. it's insane 
here. So it just blows everything up. I hang on. Um, where am I looking? I'm looking in dungeon walls. Yeah, dungeon walls. Whereas. So you're you're since I use VS Code, are you saying yours doesn't look my, like my, mine? That, see the the screen grab after. That's how my editor looks on every project I work on, okay. even the meta game repo. But I open up the the achievements repo and I get the first the first one. It's just insane. And every time I so I change if, the if, settings. If you want to, you should be able to remove the VS Code settings directory and add it to the Git Ignore. Okay. Cool. And I think that that will solve this. Um. Yeah, it's just it's always really committed. alarming. It's committed because <laughs> Tim Finney and I both have large fonts, and so it's going between like four and five. But I, I, it makes sense for like a screen share kind of pair programming yeah. kind of scenario. Yeah. And I know Tim Finney's got like an insanely kind of wide screen as well. Yeah, it's like a television. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm on a 24 inch monitor. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> I feel your pain. Uh, um, fuck. Um, yeah, just just uh, RM the VS Code and cat, uh, echo yeah. dot VS yeah. Code to uh, get ignore. Okay. Did you want me to continue on on this, yeah, just shutting fair. this off? Yeah. Are you good, Lux, with what your next step? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. I don't know why I didn't didn't think of that before. Because people don't normally commit the VS Code config directory into uh, Git. Well, it <laughs> seems like it would be useful, and everyone would be working from the same thing. But it's yeah. quite a personal thing, your IDE, isn't it? It, it yeah. messed me up a little bit because it really like it was turning my screens white which so i like i went and just overrid the, the the configuration in vs code right yeah yeah i've added it to uh get ignore do you want me to do should we shut this feature off and just see if we if you get it comment out outline the entire contents of that method 31 through the end of the method All the way. The end of the method is after the end of the return statement. Yeah, that's it. And now just at the top, line 31, add a new line and return space. Do box. <coughs> a cap, yes, a tag. Do a box tag. fucking weird. I don't know what makes that a valid next page, but the other one doesn't fucking work. I don't get it. But we're not going to worry about it. Put test or something inside of the box. Want me to go for it? Over here? Build again? Yeah. Okay, so while yeah. that's going... We were back here, and uh, let's expand out your idea. Your idea was, well, <laughs> I know we're waiting to redeploy a clean NFTs one. NFTs that we're going to mint? Is that what you're talking about? We're going to make a fresh one, Yeah. Um, and it's going to be called Hourly Token Minter yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, but the first token is the pair programming session. Pair programming second hourly set token. Of tokens is reviews and then finally you mint hours after they've after the submission has been reviewed so the third token is the hourly token and it will represent literally periods of time spent doing whatever the pair programming in this case i want it to be though for driving cars definitely so my vision with this uh Lux is to sort of get it working for metagame. So metagame has an achievement system 
and then yeah. starting to take that same concept and and making a quarter, sort of use case specific. So we're going to mint a like a smart contract, a minting smart contract based on the achievements framework, but then making it look like it's for a specific use case, be it insurance, right, software yeah. team. So I see you've got all yeah. the, the different, you've got your underwriters, your claimants and uh, body shop and stuff. Yeah, and that uh, just makes it for confusion. Like, if I go into Medigame, they're like, what's all this shit? Or yeah, if I go yeah, to an insurance guy, they're like, yeah. what's all this shit? So I feel that we got to use the same thing. We'll have the Medigame sort of master one. It becomes part of my meta and everything. But then we're yeah. integrating people into the technology by them using the, quote, Metagame NFT achievements. But it's for – and where Dis Bullock and I are going to start is – what we're doing with the paired programming. So there'll be tokens that represent the time spent evaluating these sessions. Yeah, and based true, on how many true. tokens you have, right? Yeah. But you'll get, yeah, you'll get hourly, the reviewers will get hourly tokens. The initial workers will get hourly tokens because I want to have every, by the trusted reviewers, I want to have every moment in the video have been reviewed by three separate people. And so theoretically, right. that's three times the amount of time that it took us to record the thing, which a kid and I, the other day went 12 hours, like 11 and a half, 12 hours. But theoretically yeah. I want 36 hours worth of review time to go into that video. Well, I guess you could watch it at like one and a half speed or something, but still a significant amount of time. I don't want to pay. Yeah. One and a half speed. You could, yeah, quite easily probably, um, sort of, yeah. Get a, a feel for the session. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, it brought us right yeah. back to the same area. You guys, Really? Uh, check your well. Other, here, this check thing. Your I mean, other, it... Check your other pages. Are they? Do they return NX pages? So look at look in disperse first. Uh, scroll up to where uh, the function is. Uh, uh. Scroll up to where the function opens. There. Hang on. Stop. You're gonna miss it. Yeah. So that's the next page. Go to edit. That is a next page. Go to new. Is a next page. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Go, go back. You got another. Do what is what's exported? What's export default at the bottom? <coughs> okay, then it, it, that should be right. I don't understand how that's set up. But I'm not gonna worry about it. That's the next page. What about view? And don't we have to commit it? I don't get how Vercel is getting this code. Did you, wasn't there two default exports in in that last file in the new Were there? index? You had default new. Oh, is there is there an export default up at the top? Was there? No, no, my bad. Ooh. No, I was hoping you found something because I don't. Me too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah I don't no, know what we need right now. <laughs> um. So. So do I want to un. So do I want to uncomment but, this because no, that's that, really. Leave that alone. Okay. Leave that alone. Okay. Uh, so view was also a next page, correct? Yes. So check index.tsx. We made changes to underscore document. Check document. Didn't we add something to this? The dark I don't remember theme, changing the anything theme. on this. We, yeah, that extend theme is... But that looks right. Body, color mode, script. Um... Export default class document extends next document. That looks so reasonable. Um, uh, so on that, I'm not using a class for document on okay, what I'm what working do you on have? at the moment. So I'm importing um, and second. Yeah, I'm importing that stuff, but I'm just I've got export default function document and then I just return HTML and all that other governs 
Um, okay, we could try that. So copy line 14, <clears throat> 10 Finney. And copy it and paste it right underneath itself. And put that back. <laughs> I don't know what you just did. God, it's like my my mouse is all messed up. So I got to go backwards. Yeah, no. Hey, just 14, copy, just copy, copy it. Copy that line and comment one copy of it out. It's one of those things on VS Code is acting up right now. With yeah, my mouse. restarting just sometimes helps. It, my, uh, mine. Okay. If I close so, and open it, will it save all my open files? Well, should. My whole themes now changed across all my all my projects. <laughs> when you remove the Vercel directory, I I removed the Are VS Code, code directory yeah. in achievements, but yeah. I th it, I need to now go back and reset my my theme, my yeah. default yeah, theme. No good deed goes unpunished around here. <laughs> so line fifteen should be export default const remove class uh space equals document const document no yeah const document no equal sign in the middle there so just const do don't re don't retype it <laughs> it's already there i mean it is it's right after the equal sign just remove the equal sign const document space equals space uh open print close paren rocket no, at rocket outside of the, yeah. You're just declaring a, a, a method. And so remove extends and remove next document. Is that what you have, Lux? No, there's a render method. So uh, remove line 16. Change line 15. Change the open brace to an open paren. So I was muted there. Yes. Yeah, remove the return. Yeah, 16. And then the, the matching. Yeah. Uh, it's function, not const. It's not a. Oh, you uh, yeah, arrow hang on, wait, that's, that's not. We don't have the same thing. That's not the same thing. Um, so you have export default function document open print close print. There's no equal sign in yours, right? Um, I've just pasted it into the dungeon walls. Okay. No, there's no. It's just a. It's it's a function, not an arrow function. I would. Remove line. Hey, I'm line. Let's just try. Let me see if this will if this will parse real quick. Uh, hover over const. What's the error? Expression expected. So remove the default from before. Yeah, and go down to the bottom of the file. All right. Yeah. Go down to the bot. Go export default capital document. This should be equivalent. Yeah. So try to give it to Vercel again. I wonder where we got that and why it worked locally. Surely from Chakra. Yeah, I don't even remember working on this file, yeah, but it must have been we did it we really quick. You just knew what needed to be done. Like we, you were, we had like 15 minutes left, and you're like, what do you want to do? I asked you what you wanted to do, and you wanted to add a dark mode, and so we did. And it was dark mode for the <laughs> whole thing? Why it's dark. Yeah, the whole page is, oh. <laughs> is dark. <laughs> so we start, you started out, it was all in a white page. Yeah, I, that's probably one of the first things I would have said. <laughs> it's funny. It's But it's not a toggle now, right? 
It's like no, we don't need to give no, people a toggle. No, well, it's set, go back and look at the file again. So if if we wanted to currently um, initial color mode, if you go back to the file real quick, if you look at line uh, line eight and line nine, actually, if you used line nine was set to true, then if you had dark mode set on your computer, then it should be dark here, I believe. Right, and those are the things that I would just want to remember. I mean, I could always comment that out and just put the word, you know, true here or just put the word what's the opposite of dark light light mode yeah exactly and i could just like but i know that that makes for ugly code but sometimes that's that's how hacky i am i'm just like this and then i'm like okay <laughs> well I go yeah, look no, my I comment. i'm like that yeah oh you are okay <laughs> sometimes i'm embarrassed to say it but <laughs> no i, I uh, it's surprising like how mm. many people do the sort of stuff that, that you do and you realize oh right yeah I'm not that that. Sort of <laughs> Sometimes like that. we're just trying to get something to work. <laughs> yeah. But I like working yeah. with Dispolic because you're a little bit more like critical about like proper syntax and spacing have, and stuff. Oh and my god! I don't want to reject it like, as long as somebody prettier, can guide you through it. I have banished Prettier from my code oh. because it cuts out parens sometimes, and I want every backspace like every time it de-indents, I want there to be a closed paren, a closed bracket, or a closed brace. And it takes some of those friends out, and it just throws me off, and it irritates me to no end. God, another one? Come on. It's just so odd. Is it... Damn. I really was hoping that was it, because we made... The document yeah. we took the document from being an object to theoretically being a JSX. So what's component. that? Uh, okay. And it just keeps referring uh, back to this app, the app uh, TSX, right? There's uh, no. Are there other errors that you're seeing in here that I'm just not seeing? Is this the error? It, no, the errors online that five ninety seven fifty six dot that one there go up. Three, go up three, go go down one. Yeah, that last line. the The fact you can't assign an object to a React it's, node, it's and I thought we were returning down. an object for document, but we're now returning yeah. a React node. I assume. Oh, sorry. sorry. What was that? I yeah, I can't can't really hear much, darling. But where but where is this line third? Like, I guess I'm not seeing it. Is it, you're saying it's here? That's the error. The file is pages underscore app yeah well we're over here in this document thing but we're not yes, doing that one anymore we fixed what we wanted has to do there. within it a document i believe and then a pages are within so it's in this pages props the the, the problem is here or the problem is with this component that it wants oh, yeah. Do a online um, 30, oh. do a console, an uh, open brace console.log, um, add a new line inside of the web three context provider tag. Inside, no, I'm sorry, inside, not um, not within, but inside. Not inside the tag in here. Uh, open brace console.debug or log, open print, open brace, capital. No, console.debug or console.log. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. I don't know if it's uh, okay. worth mentioning. I, I've got, like, uh, my, like the pro providers out at, like, uh, the app provider. Chakra is, like, one of the last children. So you bring down like the import? The, uh, what is, app provider the, and what is the I'm, outermost tag? I'm using like the the Web three framework that I'm working with at the moment, which okay. is uh, used app. Okay. And then I've got head. Then I've got CSS reset. Then chakra provider. And then my header component. And then footer. 
I mean, we could swap Apollo provider or Web three context provider. So that bring sounds... your Chakra provider down into into, uh, and your pro Apollo provider maybe at the top, and okay. the Web three context at the top. I don't know. Like that, right there. Yeah, and then your but no, your ab ahead. above the head, above the head. So you've got your Apollo provider as the parent. And then uh, your Web3 contract provider. Uh, Hang on. Let, let, let me clarify real quick. So 1050, yeah. starting from the top, Web3 contacts provider and then Apollo provider? Is that what you said? No, I think Apollo provider. Okay, yeah. So starting from the top, the Apollo top. provider and then Web3 provider. And then yeah. head and then chakra provider? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So my first uh, import is this? No, that's don't worry oh. about that. It's line twenty nine. Okay. Or your chakra provider before head. Um, okay. that's, that's, I don't that's know how it handles injecting the CSS. Yeah. And stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go line eighteen. You want me to move no, I chakra want you provider? To move line thirty two to line eighteen. Yeah. And then line thirty three to line nineteen. And then fix your indents. Chakra provider's out of order, though, so I need to bring chakra fix provider. Your, your yeah, indents, bring that inside. Yeah, do that bit. That's all. So it's, okay. Yeah. Does not require coding knowledge to do. I think that's uh, pretty cool there. <laughs> Careful who you're talking to here. <laughs> okay, so you're indenting how many? Like, I'll grab the whole thing in one for now, right? One. Mm -hmm. And then, can you not right click and format with? Uh, Sometimes it blows yeah, other yeah. stuff How out. How do you do that? Oh, you right get a context and... menu. Is there a format? Uh, menu? Yeah, and then format with, and then uh, yeah, TypeScript and language features. Huh. There you go. Oh yeah, it's, mine... yeah. No, I use that all the time, but I think it blew out some of our stuff one day, and you were like, "No, no, no!" And I'm like, "Okay, I won't I do have, that again." I would not turn down that feature. Okay. I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, well, go get I've, go get that one because it's just. It's I just... spent some time uh, this week setting up my my editor like properly with with proper linting rules, and it just like you save it and it it formats it kind of on the fly. And it's so cool. It's just so nice okay. not having to worry about formatting. Yeah. It makes it so so much easier to read. Do you uh, want me to do this console debug finish on this? Uh, yeah, put component in there. Capital component. Uh, and okay. then run it locally so you can see that, or what do you want? Run yarn dev, yeah. I can run it from it within UI. Yeah, I just want to make sure everything's still running because we've been kind of screwing around a little bit. Looks good. Yeah, it seems reasonable. Okay. So. Uh, Do you want to see the debug? Give it, give it to Vercel. Yeah, I was. I wanted Vercel to print out that that object before in the log. It hopefully should be in the build log before it dies. Hopefully. This Bullock? Yes. Have you done much with Jest? I used to be... Uh, fuck, what is Ruby's... Ruby on Rails has a testing framework that goes with it called right. something I'm completely blanking. But I did... I worked on this really cool project. It was the, the basis... For some like country band, I cannot remember what. Not, I can't remember. It's a really cool band. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, 
he had written just thousands and thousands of tests. Every feature that he added, he tested thoroughly. And I spent right. actually three or four months going down to his house and doing essentially what I've been doing with Ten Finney, teaching someone else how to write right, these okay. Rails tests. Nice. And it was so it was so easy to refactor anything because anytime anything remotely was off, some test yeah. would start failing. Yeah, it's uh, uh I just just started like using it this week. Um, for a, like a code challenge for a job. Okay. Um, I've never written tests before, but the sort of bonus points are uh, error checking and um, like uh, tests. So. No, I so it's the equivalent I'd... of what we're doing, like with hard hat. It's just uh, yeah, chai. writing tests yeah. for functions and we're, stuff. For the, the contract stuff is what we've been testing yeah. with chai, and maybe yeah. expect. I can't remember which libraries we're using, but yeah, not just exactly, but I, that's that is the one that I hear continually. Yeah, it's but yeah, I, I sort of what I've been sort of hunting around, sort of looking, seeing what's uh, being used. Jest seems to be pretty popular in the React world, um, but yeah, I just wrote a simple one for like the footer. Where it, you know the footer needs to display with this like text in it, and it you know you change the text and you get an error, um, okay. which is amazing for like uh, yeah just keeping like styles and how it, like can, uh, you, can you say the code? Does it say like if element dot contains and then the yeah. string? And you can do like fuzzy matching and stuff. So okay. like with the hello world example, like you could put like hello hello were and you can make sure that that's that's rendered onto the page um yeah it's like pretty deep um but i i managed to make my footer one work but my mm -hmm. header one fails i really? can't uh but it's kind of chakra um chakra related i think uh, yeah if you want to look at it we can look at it I've got. I'm supposed to be helping a kid, but I'm gonna give myself at least an hour before I have not a, an, another hour. But I'm gonna get to at least an hour before I worry about pair programming because we did twelve um, straight hours. We were we were literally like I would tell him it's like I'm going to sleep now, and he'd say, oh, "What about <laughs> whatever?" And we would talk for another half an hour about whatever it was, which was good. It was a very productive session, but it's just I can't do it. Twelve hours. Yeah. <laughs> We started wow. at 3 p.m. and ended at 3 a.m. Who was that? You and... A Kig working on his carbon NFTs. Oh, really? And we were trying to get Chainlink to function. And he initially said that he didn't want to pay a provider. He wanted to try to pass everything using... There's some existing like set tasks that Chainlink nodes can do. And he wanted to try to do it using those set tasks. But it turns out that it made it extremely difficult. But we added right. Hasura so that we could repeat messages. And we did like all this stuff. And then he's like, maybe we don't do it this way. And we, ran, we removed like a third of the code. And, but it, it worked after that, which was good. And so far as cool. mentoring, nice. again, I think it was time well spent. But so far as productive work time, it was not that. <laughs> yeah. So I would have been able to deploy this if I was using a different server, like whatever you use for Chiefs. If you right? want to just... push the no, – that's okay, so that's what I was saying. Next JS, when it is deploying – when it is building a static site – it assumes that it is at the root of the domain. So you will need, do you have access to a DNS server so you can create C names in your domain? The, any of the domains you control. Do you know what a, do you know what a DNS record I is? Do. I sure. do. If it's yeah, I've done that for years. Okay. Uh, I've just, uh, Vercel, go, yeah. Vercel well, was, just became a one-stop shop for me. So Vercel lets you create C name records? Yeah. Okay, you will need to point a CNAME record at your GitHub repository 
or it essentially it won't work because it will be in a subdirectory. It won't be at the root. You need to create a C name for it in order for it to, for it to work. But we can I can show you how to push to GitHub Pages. What I'd write, like to do is just fix this one if possible. But if you're getting frustrated, I'm looking for another solution, which means either I go backwards to where we were 12 days ago and we just so like, you know. This, this deploys as a static site, does it? Not in Vercel. Vercel's running like serverless functions to... Hmm. But you could, next. can you deploy it to, um, say, Fleek? Well, deploy I deployed Fleek this one. Too. See, this is right here, this Chiefs.NFTs. I deployed yeah. this 12 days ago. And okay, whatever okay. we change is now not allowing me. And this was literally one push of the button to Spolik. And that's what's frustrating to me. I'm like going, no, well, I what went wrong? I get, I get what however is supposed okay. to work. But okay. it didn't. <laughs> okay. So... Um, Can we just remove the functionality and still get the filtering in? Because the filtering was huge what we did yesterday. It's like, I'm not going to yeah. abandon that. But in lieu of me being able to deploy this for somewhere, well, it's like, get... Your, your hesitance to deploy to GitHub pages is... It's just bad. another thing now. And I'm like, well, fuck, what am I... I have 40 deployed websites on Vercel. And if I just have one on GitHub, yeah, I guess that's cool. I mean, I might as well learn it, right? It should be running one command. <laughs> It should just be okay. Then let's do that. It's like if the, if we're at a point right now and it's like this is just like debugging. So it's just going to frustrate us. It's like forget it. So that you have a, a a separate repository for this. Yeah, maybe that ultimately is good because then you can help me with GitHub and says okay, I'm do I have a new use case, and then you're going to be like A B C D E F G and boom, it's there and it's live and it, it maps to one of my domains. I'm, cool. I am. I am doing most of my deployments to GitHub Pages in part in expectation of doing static sites so that I can deploy to IPFS. Well, then I would just yeah, put I... them all under my world law. Then this is the one I pay for. So I got like, I don't know, it's black box law. Then I have, all, you know, I paid for all the bells and whistles and I never yeah. use it. Ultimately, this is where I wanted these anyway. Um, if this doesn't look too weird. Wherever you want to put it, that's where we'll put it. I don't okay. care. Okay. Black block, black box, block law. Yeah, so let's just do that, and I'll figure out the C names. I think it's just a command line that I have to use for Vercel, or they might even have it in their UI now. So let me, so I'd have to log out of this, I guess, and log in as uh, world yeah, law. I guess so. Is it better that I'm on a pro? Well, I need because I don't want a second pro account. Pro used to give you private repositories. I don't even know what it does now. Other than it makes your name brown in comments. Uh, mine is. You can uh, first self pro. No GitHub. Oh, oh, I don't know. I've been on pro GitHub pro for um, ages. I'll, I'll just stick with the ten fifty one. Like it's three like dollars it, a month or something. If, if we get in the, the routine of it, this will look, I might ask you to come help me again if I can't figure it all out on my own. But yeah, okay, so we'll do it in 10 Finney. Um, let's, de let's deploy a version of chi this achievement. So fork, it is the gonna... fork the repository to this repository. Well, not... Okay, so, so if this... If you... Um, uh... Oh, shit, what was it? Oh, if you connect uh, org uh, GitHub account to Vercel, you have to have a team, a team uh, okay. Vercel Pro okay. subscription. It's worth noting. I did that with Revesture. How much is it? Uh, uh, it's like $15, maybe $15 a month. But... Yeah, okay. I just grabbed a trial for the, for the uh, hackathon. And uh, honestly, though, and you guys, so, I'll do what needs to be done. If it's helpful for you guys, I, I have you I'll forked pay, the repository. Yeah. Well, yeah, tell me I'm in right here. And now in I'll like, GitHub, what do you want me to do in GitHub? I want you to fork the repository in GitHub. I want you to fork Metafam slash achievement. Okay. So Play you don't right care now. about that. I have a locally. You're not asking me to do that. Okay. You're going to click because I already have it locally. It's right button, here. Fork button at the top of the screen. Yeah, but you can't. You okay. can't deploy to 
the one in the Metafam because that's where Cheeves is deployed to. Yeah. Should I call you know, it the same name or should this now be private label Cheeves one? Whatever you want to call it. Whatever okay. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> this is Alex. Cheeves, P- Cheeves PL. That's it. Awesome. Okay. Alex accused and I'm going to create a fork right here. Alex accused me of bike shedding, which is the concept is uh, during the technical parts of the talk, there are certain people who will sit there and say nothing because they don't know what the hell everybody's talking about. But when it comes to small little things that everyone can have an opinion on, discussion will go on for hours. And it's called bike shedding. <laughs> and he called one of my code reviews bike shedding because I, I still think he could remove one of his if statements. I, he had a redundant if statement, but he called me, he accused me of bike shedding. Anyway, mm. what are, so where are we at? You're deploying. Well, I forked, I forked it to, to, I guess, Tin Finian here. So and then now I guess we're going to code. Gonna... <clears throat> now you can deploy that from, uh, and so, yeah, go back GitHub to the repository. Or... Go back to the do, repository over here. Um, yeah. Do get remote space dash V. Get remote dash V as in Victor? Yeah. I think that you just are going to replace the origin, I think. is that Does that seem reasonable to you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so just get uh, remote remove origin. Remote well, you cannot remove. Well, you can origin, can't you? What is it? Uh, can't you do... Um... Remote remove. Sorry. Remote remove origin, just like that. Yep. Get remote add. Well, you can do get or... remote update origin and then put the. Oh, you the, can put uh, a new get... URL. Okay. Keystrokes. Uh, if you're well, SSH. Yeah, do add now. Do you do add now because we removed it, or does it matter? You can see. But anyway, paste. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose you'll need URL. to add it. Yeah, if you've removed it. We can try update and see if it fails. Is there a word that I need to remove out no, of here? No, just, just paste in that and hit enter. Yeah, get remote add origin. Yeah. Get. No, do definitely don't retype all that. Hit the up arrow. Change update and then to add. Replace. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Now, um, get space UI colon pub. I think. No, yarn. Sorry, not get. I was in get too long. Yeah, it looks like it's just directly right in their um, UI now on Vercel. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Is it domains up at the top? Yeah. Oh, you do have quite a few domains. Oh, you've got got all of your domains in Vercel, right? Yeah, I've rolled them all out over the last uh, okay. like couple of years. Right. Some of them I had to go daddy, and little by little I've been... Oh shit! Expired. Oh, those are okay. Uh, I've started using Google. They do free email forwarding. Gandhi. I discovered. Hey. I did. I actually got excited and registered fat dot rocks for my rock salt. I don't know if you've seen my rock salt weighing endeavor. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'll, I'll. It's a chi- It's for a child science project. It's right. for a. It's for a courier network. It's for a variety of things. But yeah, it it is. It's it's like a jeweler's scale with rock salt in a little one of those little trays sitting on it. Okay. And I forget why I brought that up. What were we talking about? We were talking um, about domain names. Oh, I registered fat dot rocks for that rock salt selling endeavor. Fat dot rocks, but I registered it on GoDaddy. I think not GoDaddy. Uh. 
shit. I can't even remember I've registered it now. I've lost it. I'll find out if you want to. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, I can do who is fat dot rocks. Nice. I mean, you're starting to make me seem like this was too easy. It's like, it, did this just deploy somewhere already by the pub command, and now I just have to assign a domain to it? It is GoDaddy. Uh, you just Shit. need to go into Vercel, and I think you just probably have to hook up the repo, do you? Have you done that yet? Um, in Vercel, all I did is go to the domains where, like it said, you said, I'm just going to have to put a, a C name in here or something? Yeah, C name. Yeah, but it has to be set up on the project within Vercel as well. No, we are just creating a C name to point to GitHub. We're going to deploy to GitHub. Uh, okay. Yeah, Got so you. forget about Vercel, except right. we're just doing okay. domain right. right now. So. Okay. So the name will be Chiefs PL or whatever. Um, hang on. Let me let me think real quick. Yeah, the val let's do the value first because I can do the value easier. The so it says name type change type to C name in the line above. Yeah, and yeah, so that should be ten finny dot github dot io. Ten finny dot github. That's how they go. Github dot io. Okay. And I don't think you have to have a closing dot. Um, but the, you haven't given it a name yet. You do need to give it um, a name, whatever you want Chief. that to be. And then we'll go Chiefs PL. On uh, GitHub, on um, Gandhi, and I think, yeah, on Google, I think it needs the suffix uh, period. Okay. So <coughs> put a dot after, the C name. after your After value. the IO? Yeah. Like that? I'm okay. pretty sure. I Yeah, some of them are finicky. Some of them are not. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know enough to do... But, but you haven't got... Have know. you got another C name there with a dot? That one hasn't got a dot, has it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. After the dot com. Give it a dot then. This all looks right to you, so go ahead and add this one. Yeah. Okay, Chiefs PL, uh, value 1050.github.io. Okay. So go into settings in your GitHub repository. Settings in my GitHub settings. repository. Okay. And then pages in the left hand column. And then that blank in the middle should be P Chiefs PL dot whatever, whatever. Um, dot freeweb 3com Yeah. Okay. We'll see if, it, if the DNS record is propagated yet. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so this DNS basically... is so much faster these days. Yes. Okay. And it refreshes like a lot quicker as well. Incredible. Incredible how fast. No, I remember like I'd poison a cache. And I was like, well, I guess I've got about a day now to wait before <laughs> I can go to work. That was so yeah, really. easy. Yeah. It is so, so easy. Like yeah. the whole thing is so much easier these days. So should I start rolling out all my uh, pay much to Vercel because I don't have any traffic? Would this make sense to just stop abandoning, try to do all it my depends on. Like it depends on the the application as to whether or not you can build it statically okay, are you using right. databases or anything uh using ipfs uh, some sometimes very very few times i try to do everything just query yeah ipfs or something okay cool all right so now we can go ahead and de deploy a fresh one i mean at some point since we're us three are on the phone is like do you guys ever want to monetize any of this stuff or are you guys just happy i doing have things schemes the way that upon doing? schemes ten Benny. I'm working on writing it down. I got a week and a half. I got till the seventeenth to come up with something coherent for twenty minutes. Okay, okay. I just right. um last week resurrected an eight year old an eight year old side project. Um just because I uh uh someone mentioned uh a 
like a back end kind of API, uh, Postgres API called Thin. Okay. Uh, it's really easy to just, just fire up a, a, a back end for, for a, a project. So I resurrected this, this project, the archaeology kind of social archaeology app that I started building eight years ago and then abandoned. And it's uh, in I resurrected thin? that. Huh? Is it, does it use thin? Yeah, it's using thin for like, yeah, storing the geolocation and like, uh, yeah, data pre- about. Would you say types. it's, it is preferable to GraphQL and Hasura? Um, I don't know enough. I, I haven't used it enough really yet, okay. but, um, I haven't, and I haven't used, um, Hasura, but I guess you could, it, what's really nice about it is that it handles migrations really yeah. easily. And then there's just like a yarn command you run, which will bring in all the types for your schema. Okay. Um, and the so language makes... is JavaScript? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's all JavaScript. Yeah, that's, again, this guy um, wants to do Unreal 5, and I don't want to write C++. I have no desire to, to, to really dig into another language. I'm barely competent in JavaScript. Yeah, no, I was I was able to, like, over, like, a couple of days, fire up a little, little app um, that I was, you know, yeah kind of the start of, of where I want to go with it. But it yeah, it was very easy to get up and running with it. Okay. Um and the guys were really um keen to sort of be supportive uh of any questions and stuff. But I think you can you can export um like Postgres stuff over to GraphQL. What I like about GraphQL is you can use it with a st- static site and deploy to like uh you can use something like sanity um i have CMS. read a little bit about sanity can you describe it to me yeah so it's a like a headless cms so it basically uses uh markdown or or graphql um as a kind of back end okay um and so you can either yeah build your site with markdown and then hook it into Sanity and Sanity will create all the markdown files for you. Uh, no, uh, does that, well, yeah, 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 because when you make a change with Sanity, it then updates the, your GitHub repo and then deploys the static pages. Um, so you can kind of, yeah, basically CMS a, a static site, um, you can do I feel like, like I downloaded this and didn't. I get built a hooked. couple of um, a couple of sites with Sanity and Gatsby. Okay, um, I've, I've heard of, have um, not used. They're really nice, nice, um, yeah, nice experience on both of them, and, and the Sanity um, UI is really nice. Like as a, as a kind of yeah, it's really pleasure, pleasurable yeah. to kind of use. Um, but yeah, thin kind of got me up and running, um, the other day when I wanted to work on something. Um, I have, but yeah, I don't know how it right. compares to like, yeah, uh, Hasura and stuff. I learned, well, Hasura is just GraphQL. So yeah, if you like writing GraphQL, then that's what Hasura is. That's the whole point of it is to put GraphQL over the SQL. But I discovered right. that there's web HID. Have I, did I tell you this? I feel like I told, I can't remember who I told. Um, web, are you, web HID is part of the capabilities initiative where they want to make everything that you can do in a native Android app, you should be able to do in the browser. And so Web HID is for human interface devices, USB devices. Okay. Right. And there is code to like I can change the colors on my screen deck, which and you know what a screen deck is? Yeah, I actually can't. Let's. I want to get into that again with you because I bought. I got that screen deck thing going. You have it on Android. This won't work on Android. I don't. No, I Maybe. have it on iPhone. I don't know. I have it on iPhone. Well, but you have it 
not you don't have a physical device with little buttons on it. It's not a USB no, but, but device. My iPhone, my iPhone emulates that. I push the buttons on my phone and it's, like it's that but box. It, but does it emulate a USB HID device? It probably doesn't. No, because what it does, it just sends it through whatever they're back so end. And then, is... like on my screen, I have OBS on my screen completely disconnected from my iPhone. I push a button on the iPhone, and the OBS thing happens. Yeah. Like, so and I'm this like, oh, that's is cool. a protocol for communicating with USB devices. Hey, before we go down, if you're looking at the screen, I want to make I'm sure not. I understand what just happened so I can do it again. We made changes to these files, and then you told me to fork achievements but we were already working in my i guess my branch yeah and i just want to make sure everything is synced up right now do we want to turn this back on so i don't lose because remember we Hang turned on. this hey, off let's let's get it yeah. let's get it deployed if it deploys like it is this, deployed it's deployed to yeah it's it's right uh yeah i just saw it at the cheese-pl.freeweb3.com yeah, right here, Chiefs PL Free Web Three. So it so it's okay. good, but yeah, I don't I know. know what the, what code we just deployed. I guess it was what we did last night, but we were just dicking around with a lot of these files. Yeah. But it does show the console debug up here, and I didn't push that. I just want to make sure we're synced up the right way. Like so, I deployed something with the console debug, up, but that wasn't from yeah, what I, I just forked. I think so. Let's just okay. Go, go ahead. ahead. So you go ahead. I just want to make sure the GitHub. So yes, if it has deployed once, then uncomment that function and remove the return statement from the top of it. But we were also screwing around with this in this owners because we we started to debug. But should I just uncomment this yeah, now? Just put it back. It was working. It was all pretty much working, and then we tried to deploy to Vercel, and Vercel choked three times. Uh, okay, so I'm only. But we did other stuff too. Um, but I'm gonna just. I guess uncomment this. Just follow along with me just for a moment. Okay, so that's now uncommented. I'm going to get rid of the box we put at the top. Yeah. Okay. I, owners is still underscored, so I should. I don't. Try try like, to run the build and see if it'll if it if it'll die. If it'll if it dies, then you can remove the colon next page. If it doesn't die, I really want to figure out how to make that next page not. Well, I want to get rid of it just to okay, get rid of the that's error. Fine, that's fine. Whatever. Whatever okay. right now. So. Okay, so that looks okay there. But now how do I link this up with GitHub? Now I have to do a push and all that type of stuff, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. You just bear with me. Oh, and I need to get rid of that that comment. It was the debug somewhere. Debug this one. Does this look like the one we had added on? No, it's in, it should be in parentheses. It's in the JSX portion of the file. It's not in this file. It's in app.tsx, I think. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so th we'll get rid of that. And now I'm going to break this, right? And now Chiefs PL. Um, okay, now take me through this. This so is where commit. you're. Commit. Well, do type S and hit enter real quick. And again, type D and hit enter. I always do this. Like every time I commit, yeah, I, I want to do I this hit too. D and I at least scan over when I do. Make sure nothing pops out. Is well, why the fuck did I do that? Yeah, just hit spacebar. I would remove those. If you can remove and you it packages UI pages document. I really just dislike those. Well, I hate to let the color red in code, so I yeah. see when they come yeah, out, really, it's like it's there's definitely. a sore thumb. Yeah. Okay, okay. cool. Spacebar. Spacebar. Did, did that fix the uh, the issue, or are we still going and over that? that? We're deploying to no. GitHub pages. Yeah, I'm going to abandon uh, Vercel, yeah. at least for this project. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, owners... Um, they Packages, got a space UI, on pages owners ID blah blah blah. So after the title on ninety four, spacebar. Okay, that's good. So Q T space Q 
QT space. No, Q, no just you, know, you needed Q to exit out of less okay, right. and then T space. I was like, no, new command. Okay, T, um, I don't uh, private label that. or something. Sure. This is one of those will never be seen by anyone ever again bits of code or the coding process. Though soon, again, three different people will watch this. Get push. That's what I'm doing right now, and this is going to link it all uh, up. No, get pub. Get, get colon, pub. Get colon, UI colon pub. Get. So I'm witnessing this. Is it so get or is, that... is it yarn? <laughs> is Hang it on. Get? Uh, yeah, it's yarn. It's yarn. Yarn UI pub, okay. Yeah, I did that Go already. Go ahead, do, uh, Lux. So, yeah, with, with regards to the verification, I mean, if I've been on this call witnessing this, like, yes. obviously, I haven't been on the whole call. Um, no, but one of the things that I'm trying to track in this metadata for a call interface is when people join and when they drop. Because I want to give them right. an, a, a token in proportion to the, the amount of time they spend. And with the calls, right. you can automatically calculate it. But, I mean, I've, I've just been witnessing, watching. I wouldn't necessarily need the that uh well no see that's the thing so if this is not how much you get in recompense for the time you spent this is simply a, a concrete recognition of time spent and right right the person like i would the theoretically in this process i would make the most and then tenfinity and then you if, if it's not just sure. split equally just for amount of code written but there's been a couple of times that I that I have asked you a question that Ten Finney would have been like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And a lot of times you had yeah, an answer yeah. for it. Yeah. That's why I think that this way of doing work in the future is super valuable because it's those little golden nuggets well, that should be highly re rewarded, and there's just no system for it right but now. But that's really reassuring for me as well uh, as a kind of developer who's got some some skills, but mm. not like um traditional kind of like really programming skills um you've yeah, done nice some really i mean you, that most I've, of that I've had some input most of that metafest and the new landing page that was mostly you right yeah and that's some nice looking work i mean that's i just i mean that's yeah there's some coding skills there. and if you it, right and if you if you got comfortable like lux is like even though people might be asking you questions and slowing you down if you created an event and you just shared your screen and you knew at least one person was going to be there kind of muddling through with you i think that that's the way it works even if you're like hey everybody shut the fuck up and let me work here but well, we're watching funny. the work you know it was funny. And then i was that, watching um uh, brad was it the Traversy Media, um, or some some quite, or was it? Um, oh shit! It was. Um, oh shit! What's his name? Uh, React. Um, I, oh, I heard can't about remember. Anyway, Patrick hi, hi, with Chainlink hi, has a new course. That's all there, I've heard today. There was a dude on on YouTube that's like you know high level kind of well known developer, kind of working on something and he was like oh shit like oh how do you do it again and like you know he was kind of like yeah struggling a bit with bits oh. of code and stuff and it, it just just makes you kind of yeah just the, the systems think, like, that actually... we are creating are so amazingly complex but we've managed to organize them such that we can ha it's manageable bite-sized complexity but the, the connections yeah. that are the internet and what like what we're doing right now, <laughs> deploying this app to serverless whatever or building statically or whatever is just amazing. It's amazing because yeah. you would know the only way you could do this previously was if you were gated under a company with a non-compete and a bunch of IP contracts and they were telling you what to do. And we're just making it happen because we want to see it happen. We got to figure out a way that we can sustain ourselves, but that's kind of like next step. It's that. Yeah. And, and the stuff that you guys want to do oh. with the tokens, remember this bullet, I will support a liquidity pool at a small level to prove this system out. I don't know if it's $500 or $1,000. So and the, the, I want to be quick, part of that, though, is what I'm saying. You yeah. have right access to the meta. I don't think I have right access to the new MetaFest calendar. 
can you change my the title of my talk to the <clears throat> Department of Happiness? Kickstarting a revolution is what it should be. Yes, I can do that. And it looks like it redeployed, and so we're good. So our next step is to redeploy a clean one with no tokens in this PL one, and then I'm going to start stripping out all the branding, but it won't affect anything with so the metagame in, achievements. But let me let me do that first before in, I forget the calendar. In, oh. Yeah, don't worry about it. You, I just need to remember to do that at some point. Okay, well then, yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. I'll um, have access to yeah, that, even if you send me a message. Yeah, hang on, I, I'm losing it. I'm losing what I have to do. So what am I trying to accomplish again? We are, we are now redeploying. We're just going to basically use the repo okay, that I remove, just forked. Remove packages, contracts, artifacts, polygon. Packages, remove packages, contracts, contracts artifacts. Artifacts, Polygon. Polygon. Remove you want this entire remove. subdirectory removed. Yeah. Delete that subdirectory. Move to trash. Okay, so now it's been separated from the existing contract. So now run um, yarn hh colon deploy, I think. Because we haven't changed anything in the smart contracts. It's all exactly the same. Do you want me to check the JSON or no? Just go for it. Just you aren't HH deploy. I want, I want to just see it die if it's going to die. <laughs> I know you test your memory. No, a good error all the time. Can, can be as useful as anything. So okay, so okay, you have to oh, shit. How do you create a BIP thirty two? Do you know that? Uh, logo? BIP thirty no, BIP thirty nine. Thirty nine, yeah. Uh, we did it, I think, in the JSON, the, um, the cons. Up, we opened up Node and ran. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet you I can do it. I bet you I can do it. Do run Node. I mean, do you want to have access run to it? Like, uh, I run Node. Okay. Um, const space bit 39 space equals require. Open for in single quote bit thirty nine. <coughs> Open for in. No space. That. No bit thirty nine. The second one in single quotes. Run. Does that look right? No, that Oops. looks like a period. Sorry. Run that. Don't do it yet. You don't have the command yet, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head. You can always generate another one, right? Hello? Yeah, okay. Okay, so bit39 dot... I think it's generate capital mnemonic. Generate, yeah, generate, and then capital mnemonic. You're missing an N and generate. Generate mnemonic. Open, 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 print, close, print. Uh, so I'd search for BIP39 NPM on Google. I don't know what the the method to generate a mnemonic is, but there is one. A uh, BIP thirty nine mnemonic N function N generator. N NPM. NPM. Oh, NPM. And I'd scroll down. I don't see. I don't see the function yet. Hang on, there's examples. It is generate mnemonic. G E N E R A T E. See at the the top line of that file. It's what I had you type in, isn't it? Keep scrolling up. You said no, the top so of this you, file. You copied the line. Like you, you literally copied the line that you need to run. Okay, so I'm literally going to copy this line. Yeah. I thought you got it because you copied it. I was like, uh, but you were just, I guess, selecting random lines. So type mnemonic. 
Okay. There it is. So now move it and do it again. And put it in mnemonic.txt. In fact, no, wait, wait. You can put it back, actually. You can put it back. Just hit... Ah, sh shoot. Hit Control D. Well, you wanted it. You're going to want it in this, this TXT. I, I want to see if we can do this. I just want to try it. Okay. Hit With Control D. Control D. Okay, node space dash E space single quote and then copy the const bit 39 equals require bit 39 on the first thing that you typed in the node. A semicolon. Uh, I'm missing. Uh, do you want me to get rid a of that uh, single quote? A single. Uh, no, back no, here. A semicolon. A semicolon. I carried and forward now, a single. And now, um, do console dot log. Open paren. And then copy that bit 39.generate mnemonic at the end of the const mnemonic equals. No, the one below it. Just the just the bit 39 generate mnemonic. And yeah, paste it in there. Call it. It's a function. And then close cl close for in. Single quote. Oh, we have single quotes within single quotes. Uh, change the outer quotes to double quotes. Try that. I think dash E is if you want to have an inline script. Yeah, so hit the up arrow. Space, uh, in tag, space, mnemonic, M N E, mnemonic, dot txt, and hit enter. Do you want me to pull it off screen? No, the whole point. Because it's not going to show. It's just going to. It's just going to have a blank line. All right, man. So now try to run whatever you tried to run in Yarn that failed. HH deploy, yeah. Well, no, it's going to fail because it won't have enough gas. It won't have any Matic. Oh, that's right. So now... No, it still says mnemonic not defined. Cat mnemonic.txt. You can always replace it. cat mnemonic.txt Hello? Yeah, it's oh. it's not cat Just hit tab. txt or t yeah, hit txt. Tab. Hit tab. Yeah, that's it. M N E M O N I C dot txt. Yeah, hit enter. So there's a valid mnemonic in. Uh, we're going to have to actually look at where that error is being generated because I don't know why. I thought it should take a file called mnemonic.txt. Well, I had one in here before, so maybe it wasn't covering it up or something. Hang on. That's how we on, deployed on, the last hang on, one. Hang on, hang on, yep. hang on. Okay. It's right here. So uh, you're running hh colon deploy put mnemonic it is but put mnemonic.txt in the contracts directory now try to run hh colon deploy And that I've shared that on screen, it doesn't really matter, right? No, I mean, if no, somebody... you'll want to run, you definitely want to run that command to override it. Which you can do, this is compiling, so. Yeah, so you don't have any money in that wallet. So hit the up arrow, you could, yeah, just hit the up arrow. Hit it, hit it once more. Hit it once, that one. Hit enter. So it's now gone. Whatever that, the one that was compromised has been erased. 
Okay. So run, now I got to now I got to go get the pri the public you, key so I can get some out. Run again. yarn account. Run yarn run yarn h h colon account. I think. That's just going to give you the, the address of it. That's not a secret. Well, we'll see. Right? Because sometimes it's flashed up a private key, too. That's what, <laughs> but this that's one won't. That's only for those okay. shared accounts. Okay. So now I need to get that. some Matic over here. Yes. And I want some coffee. I will be back in four. Cool. And uh, then the money will be in there by the time you get back. Okay. Okay, so Regency is going to send some Matic. To... Hey guys, to this account. Hey, you got Aaron. Hey. How's it going? It's chill. Um, just popping in here. See, you guys are still doing your thing. Yeah, we're hopefully we're wrapping it all up. We're just deploying a new fresh set of NFTs, and then basically we're done. Cool. Yeah. Um, You've been helping out on Revestia. Uh, yeah, I, I've been working on like uh, another project. Well, I don't want to bother these guys while they're trying to figure something out. But oh, he's out getting coffee, so you can explain it to him quick. Oh, cool. Yeah, so working. So Revestia essentially is like uh, trying to offset carbon with yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Cheese and like. Um, yeah. I'm trying to provide the carbon, um, cool. is kind of the goal. Right. Like we're, we're working on developing a carbon token of sorts, um, taking a web two carbon token and just bring it to the web three. Cool. Um, yeah. Like some, someone called it God's work. I don't, I don't think it's God's work, but I laughed at that. Someone said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, close built, to it. Yeah, you built the front end for Revestia. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. I sort of, uh, yeah, worked on it over the hackathon, uh, then left, and yeah, just kind of, yeah, have collected my thoughts since. Um, what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, it's kind of like funny time. Um quite and, and quite hackathons are quite high kind of high emotion um quite intense and yeah um i've been sort of pretty quiet for a couple of weeks working on some other stuff um so yeah but i'd like to re-engage with revestio and um, help out if i can i've got a bit of fomo with uh refi yeah um, me there's too. so <laughs> much stuff going on and uh, it's such a good good use case for for this stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. So we're actually um, gonna meet after Tinfinity and Dispo wrap up in here in the Revestor. Yeah, I saw you and Tommy were and Epirion were hanging out in in the server. I just rejoined. Cool. Uh, cool. So yeah. Hey, Dispo, are you back? Cool. Nope. No, but I hear someone smoking a bong in there or something. No, I was smoking a spliff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Where are you well, at? Sometimes you that's at? just Pollock too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm in the UK. Cool. Explains the spliff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're still very much into our tobacco here, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I get headaches from tobacco now, so I like moved away. But I, I used to split, and I'm sure ten finnies. I don't know actually, but maybe he's trying. <laughs> no, I've been smoking weed for years. Okay, great. Oh, have you? I was just wondering actually. If I'm wondering if you uh, if you enjoy smoke ten finny. 
I've done all kinds of drugs. Now that I'm a little bit older, though, I try to slow it down. Yeah, for sure. Just to, just yeah, you to have drink. To. <laughs> yeah. You can, yeah. Yeah. You guys really. knew me. I had to slow things down. <laughs> yeah. Someone tried to get me to take mushrooms like two days ago, and I was like, I, it was just the middle of the day. I, I was just like, I think I'm too old. So, so I was just, yeah, I just didn't do it. I was, yeah. yeah. I was just. Like, once it became week. legalized in California, I mean, for years it was something that we were supposed to do clandestinely. You know? <clears throat> I grew up in Berkeley, you know, back in the I guess, 80s or whatever, and it was very liberal up there. And then moved to Southern California where it was less liberal, but there was weed everywhere. And then once it became legalized, it became an issue. You just get any kind you want, you know, as much as you want, kind of delivery. Not as much as you want, but it just didn't become a thing anymore. It's like going out and buying a 12-pack of beer and, yeah, let's get some weed too. Just have it around. Yeah, it's still pretty, pretty uh, locked down here. I uh, have. Too bad. I have a question. Definitely criminalized. Am I coming through? Yeah. Yeah. Um, have any of y'all yeah. ever had Vivance? Yeah. I worked for like fourteen straight hours, and it was just so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I that doesn't love surprise that me. Shit. That bullock. was that. That's definitely my drug of choice. That's my favorite drug. Oh, Sometimes uh, when you say, yeah, I work, uh, whatever, I work like, whatever, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'm off for four days, and I go, it's because you've been up for four days or three days straight, and you need, like, days of sleep. That's what I feel. No, I sleep, <laughs> I sleep very little the first night, and then the second night, I usually sleep, like, three to six hours. Just don't get and a then attack. I sleep for, like, 24 hours, and then I get back up. Okay, I know Aaron wants to get with uh, you on this stuff, and I think we're at the end. I got some map. How do I get the private key from the seed okay, phrase? Or it's impossible. So you have reloaded yeah. cheese-pl.freeweb3.com and had it be empty. It should be empty. That's correct. Cur- oh, right. Oh, because we just – oh, hmm. No, I haven't redeployed yet. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just got, wait, I just wait, got wait, tokens wait, wait, in. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so – you have to run yarn space hh colon publish. I'm pretty sure you have to run that. hh colon publish. So did it deploy? Did you run? Did you rerun deploy after you gave it Matic? I did not. So you well, want me to break deploy. this? Yeah, you definitely got to rerun deploy. And so if I want to add a Web3 address to my MetaMask and I am only armed with the 12, you know, word phrase, I can't import that into MetaMask with an existing MetaMask no, account. you can't. You, have, so, you can only import a private key. So you can mm-hmm. take that mnemonic and from that mnemonic generate any number of private keys. So point. if I wanted to actually use this, if I felt that, that that text file that I created is going to stay secret, I could start using that account. Yeah. But I have to somehow to get the private key for it in order to get it in a MetaMask, which it sounds like it's impossible. No, the 12 you, just, key? you take the mnemonic, you feed it to uh-huh. a computer program, and you say to the computer program, give me a private key. And you can say, give me another. That's how you're able to create multiple accounts in MetaMask, because you can dra- generate any number of private keys from a mnemonic. But th- so you, there are programs in, that you can run in Node that will do that for you. Okay, so I just need to look at that. It's probably in Austin Griffiths, Bill.eth. I bet he, he probably has a function He likes to print out private there. keys. To be honest, there's a lot of private keys printed in his code. Which okay. is, a, is, a, is a... If you're teaching, it's a great and potentially invaluable thing. But... If you're not teaching, it's not something you want to do. Because you never know when someone will accidentally reveal something. I'm trying to make that difficult to do. So, uh, what happened? Insufficient balance still? I put two mat. At least I thought I did. Run yarn HH colon account. You know what? Maybe I didn't finish it. While you were gone, we started talking. So I don't think I sent anything into it. Let me do it right now. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Polygon Matic. It's a kick is the one who's having to wait. It's not me. <laughs> well, I heard you the twelve hour session. Maybe he's still up for it. Yeah. Wait. So you were on Vivance during that whole meeting, yo? Hang on. What what day of the week was it? 
<laughs> on Thursday? Oh, I, think it was, I think it was last Thursday. No, I was yeah. coming down. I was coming. I was definitely on my way down at that point. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It starts on my work. My week started on Tuesday this week and last week. Right. I like Adderall better. I mean, I don't really? take that stuff anymore. Okay. I don't know. Vivance for me was just like, it was like the drug in Limitless is what I, I think about. Yeah, no, I mean, they're all very simple. They're just yeah. like meth yeah. things. Uh, no, they are <laughs> literally amphetamine salts. Adderall is an amphetamine salt. Right. It's a meth. It's an amphetamine yeah, salt. I had, I, I, there was this guy who took them who he was very certain of that and said it a lot. Huh. Um, so, okay, it'll deploy now. Yeah, sorry about that, you guys. Just a step. Yeah, I think one of my kids, if not both of them, are on Adderall, and I thought about saying, hey, give me some of that stuff. It sounds great. <laughs> it's worth a try. I knew that. I, mean, I knew they would have said no. <laughs> worst case scenario is you don't like it and you don't do it again. It's not gonna like break your brain. Right. It seemed like yeah, a I, drug for me. I was like that with ketamine. Really? A fr- yeah, a friend called me huh. uh, one night and said, "Man, you've got to come over. Like I've done. Oh, it broke your brain. <laughs> um, like you've got to come over and like s- save me. He had a. Yeah, uh, you got to watch me. A dude over explode. that he didn't know very well, and he just spun out. And by the time I got there, he'd gone to bed, and like I ended <laughs> up doing it with this guy, and like having such a weird night. And I've never touched it again. <laughs> it was like, and halfway through, he was like, "Hey, we could go take your bike. Your I had like a 900 cc sports bike. Yeah, and he wanted to go out for a ride on it. Um, I was like, Nah, <laughs> I can." I can't. My feet and my hands aren't attached yeah. to my body right now. I'm not riding riding anything. <laughs> like, That's smart. Yeah, that though. was horrible. It's not like Xanax. I was in. I spent Christmas two Christmas. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because let's finish this. I think I'm done. Did it publish? Load when? Okay, so reload the site. Okay, but I had before oh, I had to go in and like do... re put this in. Okay, hang on. You need to run the UI colon publish again. Because that puts some files in the UI directory. So not HH address. publish. So now it's yarn UI, UI pub. colon pub, actually. Oh, pub. Because okay. And then that should be the last one. Because next has a. Has a. Doesn't have a publish task. I think it did. No, no, I think it uh, did. Yeah. It has a. Um, it publishes the NPM. You can export. It has an export. Yes. You can export, and then it exports That's what like a static. Pub, so pub will do a build and then an export, and then a. And so if I want to, if I want to just kick you loose now, it means that I just now need to go in and create myself as a super I user under see Regency. You load. Yeah, yeah, you can do that more than likely on your own. But I want to see it load once with no. With no data in there, yeah. but for to tell me that the next thing that I should okay, so I should be able to refresh this and I'll have to put the domain in again, right? So no. I just have to do this. Yeah, I get kind of why they do that, but it's frustrating. I wish I could check something to tell it not to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to Chiefs. I'm going to save that. And then, so the process, so I don't need to do it with you because, you know, we've gone too long. So is yarn, that I need to add- I'm, I'm going to tell you the command. Uh, yarn hard hat in the contracts directory. So CD packages contracts yeah. and then yarn hard hat SU space dash dash address. And then who are you making? Whatever role. You're making yourself a, and you can use an ENS address. No, it's an address. And so I can have myself as a super user, a you know, um, any of the roles. Well, but that, super no, user, su- I can do whatever SU I want. SU is for super user. Grant is for oh. everything else. And it does take a role parameter. And then, then the next step is reserve a token. Or re- sure. reserve an NFT. Yeah, yeah. And then that's the thing that's going to spin up five tokens. That's the thing that's going to create a new token type. And then you're going to create metadata for that type. 
and then you can mint however many of those you want of that type. When do the five tokens fire? So you will create, so step one is you'll reserve an ID that will create a new type with zero tokens. After you give it some metadata, which you, there's three options now, you can, after it has metadata, then you can mint, on that minting page, you can mint by sending it to people. There has to be, someone has to have what you mint. It has to go to somebody. Oh, I guess I'm, I'm asking the question wrong. It's these permission I tokens that see... automatically fire. Yeah. What, what, at what step are these additional su saying... super user I get? This mentor configure, I thought like it automatically did these three. Yeah. Three, four, five. It does. And then, now, okay. At what step are those three tokens created? They are created after you add the metadata. token that they're for. Okay, so, so the last thing. So token number two, I get it. There's a super user that was added in number one. Yeah. Reserve a token. Now token two is going to show up and it's empty. It's just going to be yeah. in red, which means nothing has been added. So now you will have to add. No, hang on. Let, let me, let me okay. say this next bit. Yeah. So tokens three, four, and five represent the fact that the the maintainer, which for all intents and purposes is the mentor, the or not the mentor, the the creator, the person who created the new type, who created number two. That person has minting permission, has configuration permission, and has limiting permission. That's what the next three tokens represent. And then it starts over again with yes. now a new token, three more tokens come with it, yeah. a new one, number 10, three tokens come with it. The only other thing that you and I have messed around with is that command you just gave me, the yarn hard hat, SU or grant, no. dash dash address, and then the address. And that would be the other tokens that we would see in here that will look kind of like this policeman's hat. What, huh? Yeah, okay. I, I, was I, up, I, I was with I you it. up until the policeman's hat. Why well, no, it? because let's say that I come down now and I go, oh, I want to add. <sighs> well, another one of these tokens is going to show up. When you mention or, token... or Or is it, no, 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 I'm sorry. There's another one's not. It's going to change this number to seven. If you added, if you did another SU, yes, it would. Okay, yeah. So number. there's not, okay. That's the whole 1155. Okay, cool. I think we're we're good. Um, let me just gather no, my thoughts. You here. should have loaded Chief's PL Web three, and it was empty. Have you done that? Yeah, it's it's got to be here now. I mean, it's empty. It's like okay. Well, no, oh it's, shit. It's not. I guess not. Um. I am at a loss. On oh, this says for sale. This is the wrong one. Oh, that'll do it. Yep. Chiefs, it's this one. <laughs> Sorry about that. But no, it's still got this in it. Okay. Do a hard reload. You better not load anything. Hit view. Hit the view button. And the, the, the button there, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like it's if, empty. if this didn't work, it means everything we were just doing over here doesn't do anything. Okay, we're good. Yeah. All right. So this isn't the, the end of this. Obviously, I'm going to take the next few days, finish up my manifest two thing. Good luck on the the carbon offsets. Um, and so, and real uh, quick, one last thing. So so far, you understand so far as migrating your tokens. If you want, do you want to do the? So there needs to be. Do you understand? There should be four tokens created. One token represents the programming session. It includes a link to the video of the session as the animation URL. I will post a video to IPFS. I will post this video to IPFS and let you create an NFT that points to it. Because yes, anything that you can send me that you would like to represent the first token or one of the first tokens the, off of this the new session. smart contract. The session is the first thing, and it's the submission of the session. The okay. second that'll step, be the token. The that'll be the first eleven fifty five. The second the step, session token. The second step will be to review tokens. 
which represent like again someone reacting to the video or saying uh, parts of it are unimportant or saying parts of it should be blurred out but regardless That's the view token um so review mm-hmm. tokens and then finally a time token representing time spent pair programming and there is nothing different about the way that I'm going to deploy those tokens except what you and I have already done 25 times. Those, Meaning, yeah, 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 you're just going to click reserve. And reserve, then, reserve a new one, give it the metadata, make it a have, neat picture. You have three options for how to create it. So if you wanted to add custom metadata fields, you can do that in that JSON 5 input at the end of the, in the last tab. But at this point, you don't have... So it'll be... Ultimately, we want to track... I gotta think about that. We want to track the video... We would want to have the ID, I guess, of the NFT representing the session in each of the reviews. And there's just... We're gonna have to do some data structure stuff with the token metadata. Yeah, and and I want to do that next round after yeah. your time gets freed up a little bit. But at least I'll get more comfortable with this process of using this new interface to at least create tokens. With the, what the JSON five is going to include is for one of our next sessions. Yeah, and everything's editable, so it really there's no screwing it up, honestly. And Polygon should now have been regenerated in here with our new token right here that should so this is yes, the new one 77 so you should commit that to your branch not into master <laughs> you commit it into master we'll have to undo it and force push again well i forked right so oh, it, this, you okay. are on a fork true that's true you're you're now i don't want to mess anything up change, in no, here if said, i want to i start... forgot you changed your origin i forgot you changed your origin but I can mess with whatever code i want into now under the use specific case if i mess it up the worst case is we just kind of have to go back and I will fork the most current of the metagame achievements because that's still where the master code lives. Yeah. In fact, you can add that as another remote. It's just I'm pretty sure that GitHub Pages plugin that is pushing your it's building the site and then pushing it to GitHub Pages. It I'm pretty sure that it will use the origin remote in order to do what it pushes to but there's no way for me even if i start coordinating my local computer with my github there's no way to affect this right now if you can see it the go ahead and click on, click on the metafam achievements real quick because that's what i'm most concerned click about is like code, messing you click up on code the code the green button and then click on the copy button for the git now go back to yarn Go back to yarn. So do get remote add upstream and paste in space and paste in the hit enter. Try get pull upstream. I don't know if you have to have a branch. You don't have to have a branch. Um, So, yeah, hit up and hit and do master as well. And here. And it should say up to date. Yeah. So, but if there was new stuff pushed to the achievements repository, if you ran that, it would pull it down to your repository here. But in the meantime, just use the local one that is on my computer right now to screw around. Yeah. And then use the publish or the pub. And that, that I have never then done any sort of get pushing that's going to mess up metagame. There's no way. You, you, no, you can't really. I mean, but it might come over here. Tried. At least if I started doing that, at least it's going to update this code, right? Because this was a fork. Yeah. So if I wanted to change the readme and then put smart law or yeah. claims dashboard and I push from my local computer, this will change. But it hasn't done anything where you're going to be like, Scott, yes, you fucked and, it up. And okay. so. When you are, I, I'm just going to say it, and I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, but I would, when doing something that you wouldn't want committed into the master branch, I would do it in a, in a different branch. Even though you are on a fork, I would still not put stuff in master that I didn't actually want to be in master. 
got it. So I should probably get more f- Just do familiar a CO, with CO space dash B and then the branch name. Uh, CO space CO. dash B space. Oh. And then you called the other one claims. I would yeah, I'll, I'll just do another one. I'll go claims use case, you know, whatever. Sure. That's, that's, I like that better. Just put it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Th- you'd, thanks. Um, get her uh, co pilot. I want, is it called code? I thought it was called code spaces. Code pilot uh, is like a AI kind of pair programmer. No. That's, you said uh, it's a GitHub product? Yep. It's hey, co- uh, co-pilot. 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 As in a co- co-pilot in a plane or something. Have you? It's an extension in in VS Code. Um, okay. But as you as you type, it will. Oh, <laughs> look at like my screen. Yeah. <laughs> predictive text, kind of predictive code. Yeah. So it'll if if you're hooked up properly with all types and stuff. Um, and linting yeah um it kind of okay. yeah it, it's very very good if you're kind of <laughs> yeah just kind of not giving you the the exact code but kind of helping you yeah. figure out stuff um yeah i found it it's it's been a great learning tool um have you seen code spaces which no, will, like it, will, it, thing? it will for it will forward your local development ports to your the rest of your team. So I so will be able to connect to Tenfinny's together dev server. So I, right. yeah, like yeah. I could I could I could load pages and test stuff out however I wanted to. It sounds really neat. Well, it looks like I'm one step closer to that because of what we did today with deploying this through GitHub. True. I think that it's currently in limited beta because I got a message and if I can find GitHub. Well, you told me about it yesterday. I still have it on my screen. I didn't want to get well, rid of it. Um, so. Go to. No, 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 no. I'm not going to take up any more time. You got to oh, go, yeah, that's go true. do the stuff I, with those other guys. I supposed to be somewhere else two hours ago. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, thank, mm-hmm. Thanks, Dis Bullock. We'll see you at the next meeting or MetaFest. Reach out to me if you want to talk about anything. Uh, Lex, it looks like you're going to roll with Dis Bullock and Aaron into Revester. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, thanks you guys. Peace yeah. and Later. Cheers, man. We'll see, see you next time. Thanks a lot, Dis Bullock. Later. Awesome stuff. Later. Yeah, I apologize. That took a long time. You're good. I'm not. I'm just here. I'm just here. Good. <laughs> we couldn't get it talking. to deploy to Vercel. We started getting these weird type errors, like component is not a is an object and not a React node or something. And it was just I didn't. I had never seen the like, honestly. But yeah, totally. what's your status? Um. Well, I think we should just move over to Revesh. I don't mind working in oh, here. Oh yeah, no, um, we can switch. Oh, you can switch. Kind of yeah. like. Uh, it was more of a recommendation from Tommy, like that we should yeah. try and separate the carbon stuff from just because there's. I'm fine with that. <laughs> uh, where is it? Revesher. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, of Web3. What's up? Magic to another part of Web3. Right, exactly. Just a little node on the edge of the universe. <laughs> um, cool, yeah. So I'll share my screen. And I guess, Luxembourg, I'll give you the five one-minute overview. Um, cool. uh, just to talk about what we're up to here so that you're not completely lost. And just let me know if you're looking at my screen. Yeah. Okay, let me just find one of my billion fucking tabs. Um, here, so the idea is like, there's this patch, um, patch uh, projects. This is a web to, they create carbon, um, 
I need to load properly. Uh, they carry carbon offsets pretty much. Like all these projects are absorbing carbon okay. and they produce um, pretty much a certificate when you buy it. Um, and we're just taking that certificate um, and turning it into, so if we click on this project, whatever you could buy, um, you could purchase some, and when you do purchase, I mean, this is not in demo mode, but if I went to demo mode, we go to this project, we purchase, blah, 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 continue, blah, 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 place order, blah, 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 they're processing, um, view certificate, so we have this URL here that creates a certificate that's enabled by, it's called the carbon market, but we're going to have to change that to carbon blocks. It says yeah. one ton of carbon, 2002. Essentially, we're going to make an NFT oh. out of this. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then print an ERC-20 token. Um, that can go along. So the NFT is a receipt. So you buy the patch credit. The NFT is a receipt. Uh, you get the ERC-20 token. You swap the cash, the crypto for cash to stabilize it which and your your nfc 20 could be in an erc 1155 just to remind you my nft my erc 20 you mean could be an 1155 yeah you mean like i could combine these two together yes you can create metadata for of token and then print however many of them you want to with the erc 1155 but they'd have different tonnage. Oh, but it wouldn't matter because oh. whatever you can do with an ERC twenty, you can do with an ERC eleven fifty five. Because you can create multiple ones of them in the and same. And I proportion. trade them on Uniswap. I have no idea. I wouldn't be surprised if you could, but I'd also not if you couldn't. I'd I'd have to look honestly. Because that's an important question. No, absolutely. And that's the reason that we almost went with a 721 for Meta Factories. So Uniswap ERC 1155. Now there's Nifty Swap. That's not what we want. Nifty Swap? No way. My friend, I built that. No fucking way. <laughs> that came up? That's the first result. Really? I built Nifty Swaps with Rafto. Huh. Wait, it also came up here. Oh, it also came up for me. It looks, according to this random person, they only support ERC-20s. Right. And you want to be able to... It seems like you'd want it to be balancer or something. Why Uniswap? I just, I'm not necessarily. Because you're getting, gonna... you're getting Ethereum, you're getting Matic or whatever to do your purchases. That's what you need to be able to convert is your Matic, not these tokens. People have these tokens. I want them to be able to do whatever they want with it. Yeah. And I think ERC-20s are more flexible. Hang on. Let me see this. No, I, I don't disagree. It's just you're going to have to do a different one for each uh, project type. Right. You'll have, to deploy, you'll have to deploy. But it's it's not that much to deploy the contracts. It's just if you don't have to, then you wouldn't you wouldn't want to. But you you can do it that way. It's not a problem. And it's definitely the safer route at this point. Ultimately, these tokens are probably going to be bonded to a higher token. So you'd want it to be an e ERC twenty, I think. I think. Well, I, I don't. The thing is, is an ERC twenty has a name and a symbol, and that's yeah. it. It's a name and a symbol, and then any number of tokens of that name and symbol that you want. An ERC eleven fifty five has a JSON metadata file that includes a name and a symbol but also whatever other arbitrary data you want to include, and then you can mint however many tokens you want to of that name and symbol, plus other data. It's just it's more data on top of what's included in an, an ERC-20. And it's within one contract. But if there, it's, it's support in various software packages is limited, and I'm not denying that. But 
But anyway, yeah, so you want to do ERC-20s? I think. If that's, I mean, it really depends on how you plan on them being used. I don't know if balance, I was wondering if balancer took them. Because it's really for pooling them, you need something like balancer. And support will get better for these. They're not, they're, they're, it's a really nice standard. But it's not, I want to see if balancer supports it. But these eleven fifty fives are, are, are NFTs, is my under. I thought they're not really. They're called NFTs, but you can create multiple ones for a given. They're called multi tokens. How to create ERC eleven fifty five multi tokens? Because you can create multiples of of any of them that you want to. I'm looking for balancer though. Why does it not say balancer? I'll try ERC eleven fifty five liquidity pool. Yeah. Good for Dow. It's nifty swap again. Yeah. I, I, I just think it's more of, yeah, let's call it the safer route. No, it's it's definitely it's definitely the, the safer route. I'm not going to argue that. Um, cool. So I do, I'm just going to let you know, I, there, at 7 o'clock I have a meeting um, for a carbon. What time zone are you in? I'm on Eastern time. Oh, okay, okay. In two hours. I, I'm yeah. down to meet up after to what whatever works. I'm just more of like I should. I missed the last two meetings and I don't want to disappoint them because I was I had to prepare something for today. So yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it's it's a, sometimes you got a hard stop and that's just how life is. <laughs> yeah, I'd also be down to like you want to break for an hour and whatever. We'll see what. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see where we're at. We'll see where we're at. We'll see where we're at. So um, kind of where we are at um it's uh getting starting to get kind of late here so i'm not going to be able to speak for much longer um but i'm happy to sit on a call and observe and uh yeah yeah take it all in we're glad to have you for as long as you want and also like if you're interested on friday and saturday me and tommy um are going to be working on like get grants and things for revesture and carbon blocks and how to structure stuff and maybe build front ends. Um, cool. And uh, maybe I'll meet with a couple of people tomorrow. I don't know if this book's open. I don't know his schedule. So, but I forget. I have to look at my calendar. Um, but yeah, kind of the idea of where we're at just to kind of go over everything um is i just lost it this is the wrong remix i have hundreds of <laughs> this is the right remix um so i have this remix file that allows us to buy um like i can go here it's it's currently in gway and i could change that to matic i just want to keep it in gway so i don't run out of um money um yeah. <laughs> yeah while we're testing this i'm on mainnet i need to switch to mumbai um just to remind everyone where we're at so i click buy here and that's gonna pop up my wallet I'm going to confirm this. And essentially, this will buy... That was one Matic, theoretically, if I I just added that 10 to the 9th in. So this will buy um, 60... or let's, let's see if they get the latest price. 59 cents. So this should buy 59 cents worth of 
Um, and if I click token URI, it updates. And price too. Uh, patch token, yeah. No, price doesn't update because mass G is what we're returning, so it's here. It says forty nine. Oh, okay. Why did it? Why did it get forty nine? Is that how many grams? I mean, no. Oh, maybe I clicked cost. There, fifty nine. It's cost. Right. Pro I'm confused. Because so 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 here so there's two contracts we're pulling in. Um, okay. I thought it was price. So it okay. Price. No, uh, it is. We price is set in the con. Is price, price is, is here. The API point. Okay. But cost. I I named it cost stupidly, because that's what it's. It's costing, like. Cost is what you're passing. Okay. <laughs> um, in here, which is really price. I, I see what you're saying. I called it cost. Yeah, I get how you were using the word. That, that, that's how much it costs. It, it makes sense, but the price is how right. much it costs. Which... And then mass G is how many grams are bought. Yeah. And then we would... N now we're up to the point where, like... We either have to re and I, we could do this late. I could do this later. Um, kind of like adding in another project into the job, the chain link job. Adding right? project variable. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't need to do that right now. Uh, we could focus on the layer zero stuff because I can kind of like, because that would require me to again speak to Matt. Um, to get him to build us a new job. Okay. I think. Yeah, I mean, or he'll have to add another variable, a path three. Because, oh, just, yeah. yeah. So, by, I would, I don't know if this is too complex for an MVP, but I would consider having it be, if they don't, if they don't send you a project ID to buy from, that you buy from the cheapest one. I'm gonna make it so they have to send me a project ID. Oh, you'll error out. Okay, um, that, that also works, and that's simpler, definitely. Just so that we, like, people would be buying specific projects. I'm well, kind no, of on the. I mean, no, 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 no. That's the because if I just want to offset an amount of carbon the thing is is really what i would be calling you with is the amount of carbon that i want to offset right i would say i want this many tons of carbon i wouldn't say i want five dollars worth if you just wanted to offset you would say you want this many tons of carbon but not five dollars worth yeah, I mean, does that make sense? I would tell, I would know how much carbon I want. I wouldn't know how much it cost. Which, if you you that would require you just to store the, each carbon's price point. Is that too much? To, uh, not each each uh project's price point. That's not too much. I mean, like uh, we could do that eventually, I guess. You so can what? add another API endpoint, and that's just, that's definitely just a normal task for. Um, you think I could just add another one here and it'll work? Oh man, no! I just I forgot that every chain link call costs money, but if it didn't, then you could just do another request for. The thing is, is that you only need to sync those projects like once a day at most. And only if they've changed, which they shouldn't change. Or don't if they're added or won't change. Say that again. I don't think these projects are going to change. I don't either. And so you would only be really hmm. updating each one once. So you'd have one chain link or you could do one that takes an array. And you could just pass in like an array of IDs and array of prices. 
That's I'm an confused. option. That's an option. I'm not, I'm not really certain what you're saying or what. I'm saying what that you could put. So your your question is, if you wanted to be able to be told in terms of amount of carbon rather than amount to spend. So they tell you how much carbon they want. You tell them how much their options are for how much it's going to cost. Then mm -hmm. they tell you how much they're going to spend rather than they tell you how much you're going to spend and you just tell them how much they got for that. Well, actually, technically we can make, because they're not making server requests, right? So it's just a lookup, like get latest price. Yeah, I'm saying so you could use a standard, um, well, you could still use it. You could do an API endpoint for it and just use the standard. You don't have to do anything custom for it. If you do it as a separate call. And you should do it as a separate call. Because again, it only has to be done once per project. And after that, it's the projects in the system and it doesn't have to be done again. So there's not that many projects. So you're not talking about a huge amount of money and you're talking about a one-time or at least limited time cost. If you want to put it on, on chain, which I think that's that's how I think I'd do it. How it, I don't know. What's your thoughts? percent sure i think you're saying that i need to tell people how much it costs i'm saying so your current process is they tell you how much they're going to spend you tell them how much they're going to get i'm saying they should tell you how much they want and you should tell them how much it costs and then they tell you how much they're going to spend rather than the how much they're going to spend coming at the front end and i think you'll get more spending that way too probably that's just my guess Oh, yeah, we, we could think about that after. I, I, yeah. I don't think that has to be designed right now. No, you have the option of changing. <sighs> right, that wouldn't change what we're up to. I guess the only thing right now is also passing in the, the project ID. Which you said you wanted to leave <clears throat> until later? Well, I was like, maybe we should get started on some of the layer zero stuff to yeah. see if that's... So do you want to do... I mean, the reason that I was suggesting an 1155 before was that you could do your fungible token in 1155, but you're worried about the utility of it. So we can do... I mean, yeah, layer zero has their example ERC-20. Will it have a map between... What would it be between a project ID and a ERC-20? Each project would have its own token. Yeah, so you can you create an ERC-20 contract instance and put it in a map? Like a map. Like, like a map. mapping. A map. Mapping map. In Solidity. No, I see what you're saying. Oh... I don't know. I don't I know. Think Solidity you can. That well. I think I, I think you can. So you could have your project ID and then so you could create a a map between project IDs and ERC twenties. I think. I, I don't have to ask the internet. What's the alternative? What are you thinking? I was just thinking you just make a bunch of different tokens. But how how are you keeping track of which one to mint? And how are you calling those mint functions? Oh, um, like you would pass it through the API endpoint. So when it calls back... There would be like a drop-down list. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, describe it in a little bit more detail for me. So they have, so by the time they call multi rate, what was the name of that function? Uh, sorry, I was like going to draw it out. Request multi variable. When they call that, they will be passing you a project ID? I guess, yeah. And from, then you'll pass it through to the API. From this patch mentor here, from the front end.
you'll pass into this here, this um, by function. A project ID. Okay, that makes sense. You're buying of a certain project, so yeah. And then, I mean, here, like, we're figuring out the cost, subtracting the fee, passing cost, and... Why are you converting it to a string? Because the, the, it needs to go to um, here, and this is a string. Oh, encode packed takes a string. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah, that, that all makes sense, right? And I'm still not certain how to make this private, which I would need your under, I, I don't so, understand. So that will cause an event. Well, the, the line 31 will cause an event that will trigger a process on the listening chain link node. So now we have a process running on the chain link node. At that point, before it makes its, mm -hmm. it's a get request, but before it makes its request of the API endpoint, it needs to append a, a key, a secret, onto the end of the URL. And then call the API endpoint, and the API endpoint, oh, the only person that knows that secret is the, is the chain link node. So if, it, if the request includes that secret, then it can be processed, otherwise mm -hmm. rejected. Okay, so for here, to build this this token, just to give me a frame of reference for what we would want, we would also want a request dot add um, path three, which will say um, project project data comma project i oh, guess we already know the project right because it was passed in to on line 22. yeah so we have a project id oh so we don't we don't need that well do but do we need to pass it to the api endpoint so that's where you would add it to line 27. right to line 27 but i'm saying to mint to mint the the token that has to happen in the fulfilled method when you get back how much to to um mint like line 50 ish yeah but wouldn't we want to know what project we're minting for in this response uh, um hmm that would yes okay i see what you're saying so it will just return the res it will return the project so this way it gets passed through to the so we know which erc20 token to mint that makes sense that makes okay, sense okay so so you return the project here so i'm just doing this all so that i know what to yeah no that makes sense i, I get what you're saying now like you don't you know project in that method but you don't know it in the fulfillment method you don't know it on chain um and what would that project id be would that be a string uh yeah uh hang on let me think um, i guess i should look at what it looks like it could it could be a uint 256 i don't see why it wouldn't be. well you can't do uint 256 in json i don't think well we're returning a mass here that's a uint an int 256 i don't think like i was having a really hard time not having it it be having it it was getting changed into a a 32 bit number but we well, can just follow the same thing. Well, mass G, mass G is a small enough number that it can be represented precisely. It's only like when you have bits at the high end of the 256 bits that they start to get cut off. Okay, let me look at the pet. Let's get rid of this. But token ID could potentially be a, um, a, a big number. Like, my token IDs have 
the top bit set and the bottom bit set. And all the middle is a bunch of zeros. Phones, doing my usual, getting rid of stuff. Yeah. Proxies. I was trying to figure out proxies. Yeah. Is it becoming clear? Open Zeppelin's really, were, were not hard to work with at all. Yeah, I mean, the idea is kind of clear. Uh, actually implementing it on my own is probably very difficult. Um, and well, structure, just it's something you have to think about when you're, sh it's more of a structure question than a complexity yeah. question. Yeah. And like under seeing the entire path um, before I guess you go ahead and... Okay, cool. So... Back to the remix, just to, so we also over here, I guess, looking at the VS code. So I added this cost um, attribute. Okay. Because I'm not really sure why, but it seemed to make sense. At the, oh, because I wanted to create liquidity pools. So I want to know how much the mass per gram was and the cost go to search for open c metadata standard real quick because i think you have to tell it it's a number and i don't remember how wait i did this and this works i think it's display underscore type for line 34 try to wait but i I don't know if you have to. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. I um, think you have to tell it's a number. Or it'll do it. It'll treat it as a. I don't know how it'll treat it as a string. I can. You. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't. I. You. I'm definitely almost certain that you can just say it's a number. And it would right. be um, Open C metadata standard. Yeah, hey, I'm just trying to save this fucking one. Okay, Open C metadata standard. that one and then we're looking for the attributes array which is somewhere I down towards the bottom here, but it's okay yeah so let's just yeah. scroll down some we're looking for it's... attributes is what it's called right, right uh, here value starfish no it looks they've got level five and they just got a number so maybe you're fine i was wrong yeah i copied this um I no, wait, wait, wait. To... Go down to the bottom one. Oh, that are... will that will display in that little circle with a... Yeah, okay. If you have but display this type number. number here. It will display... That'll cause it to display in the boosts, I think. No, there's a boost number, actually. I, I don't know. I just know that that's possible. <laughs> but this up is above, only display information. I don't even want to display this. <laughs> I just want this in it. I'm not certain if we need this. I was just fooling around. You, I mean, you have also the option of including it under a different key. I would put it under properties. If you scroll up, up probably up a little bit, is there a properties object mentioned somewhere? No. It's in, the, it's in the ERC. Oh, that's the thing is that this was developed before you see ERC-1155. The ERC-1155 standard says try to put everything in a properties object other than the name and the image and a couple other things. But the attributes array is an open C thing, but I'm fine with supporting it. I like how they render it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Not sure. Um, cool. Okay, so back to, back to what we were doing because i think we're good there right i think give the in the nft metadata where is that here okay do so we want to do trait type um uh token type or just type actually just type i think 
and then give it a value of uh, this is this NFT represents a receipt, right? Receipt. Uh, just it just receipt. Just receipt. I don't know how to spell receipt. R e c i i e p t. Okay. Okay. Because if you go back to OpenSea real quick, if you I don't know. I don't know. Okay, yeah. If I could, I think I did. Open Sea's gone. <laughs> I think it's gone, bro. Well, okay, yeah. Click on Happy. Well, see the property Happy, Happy on the yeah. Click that. Oh, that's an image. Um, go to NFT. What it does is it will bring up all tokens of your collection that have that tag. So if someone clicks on. Um, whatever we just named that type, which I've now forgotten. Um, Great. We just put a type. Receipt. It'll bring up all the receipts if they click on receipt. Uh, this one I don't think have. they have one. But you get what you get. What I'm saying is that it'll bring up all the receipts if you give them each a, t a type of receipt. Yeah, I understand the idea of what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um... And let's get rid of this. Crashing, crashing, crashing. Also, I just want to show you something uh, that me and... So someone's doing something very similar. Um, I don't know if they're actually building it, but they're literally like... Where was it? Oh, I got so many cabs. Um, here, the Eden Dow. Okay. Stumbled across this today, and they're partnering with Patch. Um, and I've spoken to Brendan before, and I'm going to write him an email. I want to speak to him again, because I think this project has gone much farther. But I mean, they don't, I'm not really sure what they're building here. It seems that like they're building just this one dream token. Um, but then I looked at their Twitter and it looks like they're trying to use layer zero. I, I don't know. Really? This yeah. One of those like great ideas whose time has come. Cause it happens in math a lot. You'll hear that so-and-so invented calculus in the same place. Countries yeah, apart from each other. Fauci and Leibniz. Um, here, the Eden Dow, Dream With Us. I'm not really sure what they're up to here, but they're definitely working on a layer zero a layer zero token. Oh, this is scheming me. The internet's scheming me right now. Okay, that's that. Here, this is the one I want. I mean, they're definitely working on working with layer zero and patched, but it's it, it just not clear exactly what they're doing. They seem to have raised 180k. Okay. Um, from who I'm not certain about. It seems like it was mostly a Git grant. Um, but they built this thing. Is an Omni protocol, but it doesn't. Is a public goods Omni chain infrastructure. Okay. <laughs> It just doesn't, I don't understand why they're doing this <coughs> and what it is. It all begins with a steward to sell self custody of your contracts with flexible role based authentication through Soulmates Multi Role Authority. So you have a steward who is. Wait, but I have no no idea what this has to do with what they're doing with uh, like the actual like function of their organization. Or, yes, exactly. Like, uh, it ap this it appears that they are trying to build this dream token. I don't see anything about carbon sequestration. 
<laughs> right. Okay. That that uh, came later. Um, oh. th- and now, now let's just give it here. Decarbonizing warp drive. Um, right. Hello, I'm Cash, and it's wonderful to meet you. I've been a learning machine. I need to watch these, but yeah. Warp projects, and this way we can scale multiplicatively and uh, really heal our atmosphere as fast. One dollar. And the way we do that. Oh, there we go. And that's what makes Eden Dow the global reserve that hyperscales. I, I need to watch his stuff, but it it it, it how yeah, will yeah, it work? Stop here for just a second. Uh, click on the our Git book. I looked through this. Is there an intro to that? It was just like a weird shit show. <laughs> what about problem yeah. and impact? Or no, maybe. <laughs> The Dream Awakens, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, this is... I don't know. It's just like some... It's clearly one creative. guy. I don't know. It, it does look... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like a, a, a large team, definitely. Um, But... It, it seems like they're... Okay, the Carbon Projects are also rewarded S. Edin for every permanence to Carbon. This is what it, this is what it seems like they're making. I don't know. It sounds like they want to pay the the carbon pre- sequesterers for their time in a token. But or they for their carbon using... in a token, rather. I don't I don't know cuz I was looking through their stuff. Uh where was it? They were talking about Patch here. We've partnered with Patch Marketplace to curate a tier one quality projects. Um, these funds will scarce this most value of carbon in the industry. Funds will be used for parts of just carbon from Patch up to ten million dollars. Okay. Um, and then eight million would be for Patch. Two million, so twenty percent. Here's a Google Sheet of project and pricing. You click on the Google Sheet, it's just like, okay, I already. These are just all the Patch projects. These are their cost and this is the fee okay okay um and this is from months ago so i I really don't know what they're Uh, up to but they seem to be on a similar path and i'm gonna talk to patch about it yeah it's go they probably know better than anybody else right hopefully Right, but I don't think they're really... I mean, they, they seem to be doing this thing here where they're making... Together, we'll be seeding S. Eden, the roots. We're going to bootstrap the coin S. Eden to set a global floor price for... I don't know how they're going to... Bootstrap- again, S. Eden is what they are compensating the carbon producers in. I don't know. It sounds like a token that's held up by itself somehow, which doesn't work. I, it sounds like uh, magic to me. Or I hope for magic, and I don't expect it to be magic. <clears throat> Not sure what they're up to, but he said, but Tommy said he's talking at MetaFest. <laughs> well, you can learn then. That's an excellent opportunity. <clears throat> Yeah, but I'm more of like, I want to know now. But yeah, 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 okay. Whatever, I just wanted to show you that. Sorry for that. Um, I think that was important to know other yeah. people are. And another thing, which I think I told you about, was that um, Toucan Vera shut down the Toucan Bridge, pretty much. And it's not like a, it's going to be repaired situation? Is it permanent? It doesn't look too good. It doesn't huh. look good. They wrote some funny stuff in whatever. What let's, was their motivation? Not... What caused this rift? So it happened a day after Flow Carbon, <laughs> the guy um, from WeWork put $70 million into Flow Carbon, who also wants to bring credits on chain. That was like last okay. week. Oh, that was the... 
god is something yeah goddess art. nature Ooh, i wanted that one. Oh, here here so they yeah they're just taking they're just it looks owner kosh neroso i don't know who that it must be the same guy it's all one guy i think could well be his name's kosh neroso i'm gonna keep this open and google the shit out of him um a lot of this stuff like i think that in some ways, some of these ideas have to originate from a single person because it's like writing a book. It's like a Stephen King novel. Like you have to have one person come up with the whole book. Essentially. It's hard to write a book by committee. I mean, we're kind of doing it. No, we're, yeah, we're collaborating. Definitely. But I, I hear what you're saying, but the um, vision. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I think that I, see, I, I think is, like you, like that first day, you're like, do you know what you want to do? And I'm like, I know exactly what I want to do. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah, true. True. Um, okay, cool. So we're back here. Um, just kind of, I guess. So you can figuring. add, I mean, do you want, do you want to go ahead and add your other parameter to your. Um, Will that crash? I won't crash this. Well, you could just put a commented out line on 47. For, um, it, do you want to do a, a, a uint 256? Wait, wait, let, well, actually, let's, what, I guess the project, let's look at the patch API and see what it would give us. That's right. true. If you could use Patch's ID, that would be preferable. Rather, because, like, who knows what's... I'm going to actually freaking have it in here. I just hope it's not a string. <laughs> Let's click this one. Don't know how to find this. I hope you just saw that. I probably shouldn't have clicked that. I'll have to find reset that your and... keys. Yeah. Um. Okay. Orders. ID. Type string. Yes. But what is the string? Can you can you look at one of them? Like in in the um Yeah, I understand what you're asking. I'm like seeing if there's an example. My Cuz I thought it was a number. I thought it was, the string was a it might have had some letters in it. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember exactly what was in it. Create order with a project. No, I mean, so you can always, if it is a string, you can hash it and get a UNT two fifty six. If I don't know if we even need to do that. If it is just... a string, if it's already a UNT two fifty six, then you can just use it. If it is a string, you can hash it, and you can get a UN256. I did it again. I did it again. Let me get rid of this. Um, uh, uh, get, oh, wait, but I need that. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, back to patch. Do you no, have multiple no. desktops on a Mac? I think I asked yeah. this already, and you, and you showed me. I definitely have multiple desktops. Because I have a, like, not for recording desktop that I keep on the one below this. The I'm not so below I'm, this. I'm not so worried. I'm more of just, like, in the when this project is done. I mean, there's no credit card information or anything. Yeah, no, so it's, it's, it's just, like, a best practices learning to be aware of it. Because it's easy to do. It just takes a fraction of a second. Right. Um, no, I do not. And but you're recording, so it wouldn't yes. really matter. Well, how do I figure out the project ID? Looking it at the is page. in. It was in one of the responses. Where purchase? No, I don't. 
But uh, let's see, if I go to view demo, that's purchase. This must be the project ID. With the, the name? That must be what it is. Hit continue. I really thought that there was a random number with like an R in it. And then if you, is this the test site, right? I mean, this is their site. But this is a test. So you can hit place order and it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This. I can't buy. I did. I don't, again, I haven't made an LLC. And, okay, um, so. I really thought it had an ID that it, it had exposed to us at some point. Um, it must be that. That's the. I mean, yes, we could hash the name and get a unit two fifty six. Right, because we can't pass it in like this. No, it would be it would be very expensive. Well, not very expensive because of well, it depends on the chain, I guess. But on mainnet, it would be much more expensive, definitely. Okay. So yeah, that's what you'll return from that next JS totally. API endpoint. Totally not on the layer zero stuff. Okay, uh, but like, yeah, let's do this because this has to happen, I guess. Um, okay, cool. So what, what, what am I doing? Clip that. Um, okay. Let's let's. So you are getting a project ID. The thing is, is this is what I was saying. I don't think that a lot of people will know how much they want to spend. I really think they're going to know how much they want to buy. Either way, it, it would have to be broke. Well, it it's would have to where yeah. When does it go on project. chain? Is is so? Is it? Do, no, but does the, how does the, so does the, is the workflow, the person wanting to buy from you looks up the ID on the normal web and then puts it into their contract for purchasing? If they have to include a project no, ID, no, where do they get tile. it from? Where do they get it from? There's going to be a tile and like, there's going to be three different tiles a, ha like, like, a web interface. There, let's look at this website. So, but this is your transactions are happening on chain. So they're on. calling some method. They have to get the ID somewhere, but they have it has to make it on chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm showing you what I think we should do. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a tile, right? They, you just click purchase offsets here. So I, I was envisioning this being an automatic process, like someone buys an NFT and a portion of the cost goes to carbon offsets. Right, okay. So we kind of were discussing that and that's the carbon removal transactions. That, again, because because of the cost of using Chainlink, it doesn't make sense to have microtransactions run through Chainlink. Yeah. So there has to be like a batch buy. Yeah. That occurs, which is yeah. a problem actually. Why? Um, because you do a batch. It, it, it could probably only be around like thirty dollars or something because of market volatility. It just um, depends on how much, what your fees are on patch. No, 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 no. Because remember, um, well, like Binance charges me 0 0.05 BTC every time I withdraw. It doesn't matter if it's five cents or twenty dollars or eight hundred dollars. Right, but it's the same fee every transaction. BTC Say it can again. be point oh oh five BTC can be five cents on Monday and one cent on Tuesday. Yes, but I'm saying it's a constant fee. So the more transactions you have, the higher the fee goes. There's no caps on it or anything. Is there caps on patches? And is it per transaction? I don't know how they charge. No, no, no. It's it's just it's just a fee, I think, just a percentage fee. And it's it doesn't go down as you go up. 
like here no no i don't think so here okay. let's offset 21 tons add to cart okay. yeah. my cart view cart um no, that's not this thing. continue to check out i think i made an id uh <laughs> so yeah i just i wasn't envisioning this going being paired with a website that's a very different use case definitely should it not be no it's fine to do it but the, again well you lose the ability to do some automatic stuff like automated purchases for whatever reason no, no, so we're going to have automated purchases, too. Well, then, for that, they somewhere have to get a token ID. Or that, a project, a project that, ID, a project ID. That one the can thing. be the cheapest one. Say that again? That oh, that the one, if they project. don't specify it, then you buy the cheapest one? Yeah, sure. That's why I was saying you needed it, is why. Is why. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So there's kind of two different things going on here. Is like, A, I came to this, and I was trying, and I was like, uh, I just, I was like, how do you make a carbon removal transaction? Oh, I want to build that. And then, um, so here, here's the patch processing fee. For okay. each project, patch charges 10% service fee per metric ton of CO2 removed. <laughs> there up is a, a, a cap, though. <laughs> up to a cap of $8 per ton. I don't <laughs> understand that, but whatever. <laughs> I'd respond, but I, I gotta get a drink. <laughs> okay, <dude. laughs> Okay, so uh, what's up? What's up? Yeah, they're and they're doing the same thing that I'm doing: patch processing fee, Persephone processing fee. Yeah. Um. Is Persephone is their credit card processing company? That's this website. It's just a website that's a front end for patch. But so they do they handle the, the the payment part. Yeah. Okay. They're literally just taking four per five percent. They're literally doing what yeah. I'm doing for work too, as the first step. But now, once we have these tokens, we can then do other things like you're talk like we're discussing with these like micro transactions and yeah. offset transactions and other cool things um but yeah so i guess we are looking for a project id right now so um, we are hashing the name and that's the project id okay let's try this what the f I don't even know where to start. Okay, so so this so kind in of solidity. Uh, solidity. It could be. Um, it would be. Well, well, hold in... on, hold on. It gets passed in because, because. Um. Well, I can tell you how to write part of it, and you whether or not it'd be in solidity or in JavaScript, I'm not sure. Because I guess can... if it depends again on whether or not there is a website that it's paired with if that website initially the website you would you would generate it on the website i believe right that's what i'm thinking too um but it's still going to be kekak 256 of the project.name wherever that goes 
Yeah, I'm just trying to find what the remix. I guess this. Fine. Um. Okay, wh wh what is actually getting sent right now is just the price. It's no, Say that again? it's not. I'm trying to think. Oh, we're past. No, no, no. We call this a right, right, right. We call this API from. That's why you said go to Chainlink, the remix. But we would again, if you're calling it from a website. But we for right now just go to remix because right. you don't have a website. Like we're gonna pass in a URI here, probably. Not so, just. Hang a, on. Let me let me see. Um. So no, it would get past a, I would do, I would honestly take, I would do the two string on price within the method rather than passing in a string. It's just really awkward to, to represent a number as a string and pass it around when it should be passed around as a number. Okay, so back here. So just on line, no, back, right where you just were. On line 24, add a new line and just do a sign, do the two string, the string dot two string for the price. You could put on line 24. String, I, I think you need memory probably. See if it complains. If it'll take it, then that's fine. But I think it takes memory. Um, it would, yeah, you could put an underscore on the price that you're passing in. No, on the one you're passing in. Yeah. Equals string dot two string price. But it's string dot two string. Cause you want to, you're getting, you're going to change that from being a string to being a unit 256. Was it cap string? And no, you just need the the initial underscore, not a final one. Oh, that was supposed to be a close parenthesis. Um, okay. And it's not change gonna string happen. memory online. Go to go to um online twenty two. Change string memory to two. You went two fifty six. Or do you, do you, would you ever have a negative price? I can't think of why you would ever want that. So you went two fifty six. Okay, and then I go to here. No, I go to patch mentor. Uh, and I just pass in cost. Yes. And, and that okay. is a new int. Which is a short for unit 256, right? What is that? No, it, it doesn't have this. This needs to be moved now. Oh, to... okay. Gotcha. Okay, I like that. Okay. okay. So, uh, so that was not really... That was a a change that didn't actually affect the functioning at all. So you wanted to add you went 256 token I or a, a, a project ID, right? To what's being passed to request multiple variable. You're passing in, so comma space and then you is yeah. Project ID. I don't like the thing is is I always put four variables that are unused. I, that's when I put an underscore before them. Name it. I would change underscore price to price param or something. Do do you use the underscore to represent that it's unused? TypeScript I does. I don't do anything. <laughs> okay. Well, TypeScript it'll tell you that a variable is unused in the method of the of the function 
And the way you get that error to go away is you put an underscore in front of the variable name because you have to have that first variable in a multivariable call. Um, what doesn't it like? It's not being used. It's just unused. Um, okay, so you want to call this price... Param, maybe? Or uh, cost? I don't know. Right, it's cost. That's going to be confusing. You can, um, no, you, and then you'll call cost. The, you'll just replace it where it is down there. Or it could be whatever. I just The, the use of the underscore in that way, I, it doesn't sit right with me. Because it means something else. Okay. And then take the underscore, yeah, off that. And our solidity variables, no, they're, it looks like they're camel case. Okay, and then you'll you'll um, also convert project ID to a string. Right. I think also in terms of saving on gas, it's good not to make all these variables and just to convert it in real time. I don't. The assignment is not that much. I'm just saying, like it in terms of like how solidity and saving on gas. Um, Let's see how much it costs before we worry about how much it costs. Because I don't think these <laughs> are. I don't think this is what's expensive. I think that looking up, looking things up, I would expect to be really expensive. Like these okay. are just instructions getting carried out locally, so they're they shouldn't be that project. Much. But it's when it needs to pull data in. Um, so project ID and then call it projects. Sure. Um, so after price on line 32 comma space, double quote and sign close quote comma space project. And this is all being converted to a string anyway, so I don't even have to do that. What do you mean? I don't have to do this string memory thing, because this is all being converted to a string. But, oh God, I don't even know. Because if they if they are inserted as... I think that the numbers they represent will be decoded, attempted to be decoded as Unicode characters. But they're not Unicode characters. They're a number. They're a, they're an integer. So without converting them to a string, I think that oh, because the ABI encode packed returns bytes, right? I think you have to convert them because I don't think they'll pack correctly. I think they'll be interpreted as Unicode, which they aren't, unless you convert them to Unicode. All right, that's cool. Um, cool. Now we have to go to to to. Doom, 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 the, doom, doom, you doom. can go to the API endpoint in the next JS app. Doom, 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 and uh, let's see. Doom, um, scroll up to a little bit. Where's the? We'll go up to where the 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 it. Starts. Okay, that's it. Okay, so handler. So this will also have where you have const price on line seven. It'll be const price, comma, space, whatever that other variable was called. Um, and then we'll just pass it back out, won't we? Because you're not going to require it to be set. Oh, you can yeah. for the time being, but ultimately you're not going to require it to be set. Well, I would, I'm would. i going to set it in this if statement. Oh, okay. So if not set, Whatever. then... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then... Right? Well, the pro this is a little tricky because you have two options. One, you can pick... You, as the administrator, will pick a project, and that will be the default project. 
and it can be as cheap as you want it to be. But I'll, I, I think you would just make it the cheap one of the cheapest ones if they're if they're ties. But the other option is that the contract could know how much things actually cost, and do the comparison of which is the cheapest itself. So you would write a program that would sync the state of. Let's do the easier one. <laughs> okay, pick a project. So you would. Okay, so here I need a pass. Here I need to pass project ID. I gotta look. To create patch order. And then we look at create patch order. It has total price. I don't know why. I'm um, gonna use this underscore. Don't get angry. Yet. <laughs> I know. I just it's fine. It's a solidity thing. They do it in solidity. I just am used to I guess meaning. I should be ideas. using camel case here, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm not a hundred percent sure is why I didn't say anything because I, I think I do think I my impulse was camel case, definitely. Okay. And then currency, total price, constant order. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. Problem, yeah. Uh, and here we're, I don't know what the API wants. Um, total currency. Okay, project ID. This is, a, oh, it's simple. Okay. But this is this is the string name, right? Yeah. Okay. So why do I even have this const? Why do I can't I just pass it? Whatever. Pass the total. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I what can understand if it was a let, but it's a const. I don't know why you why you do that. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so project ID is underscore project ID. Currency is your C order. But again, that project ID is not. Who is calling this? Who calls this? Uh, it gets called up here. So, uh, order equals create patch order price and project ID. So, this is the, the project ID that we're passing in is that, um, that the, the result of that calling kekak, uh, the result of the hash function. Currently, well, we have to so we need to not convert it to a number. We need to just pass the entire thing, the string, the string name. We need to pass the string name in to this. So you'd go back to the remix. Right. This is right. Um... So if project ID was the, the full string name, you'd still want to pass it through to create patch orders. So yeah, I think that's all fine. You just got to... Um, you just got to... Pass... I'm getting lost. Because um, we needed to go somewhere. Where do we need to go? We needed to go to... Oh, I, this is wrong anyway. So do on line 32. Okay. Do what? No, that, that's, that should have already been like that, I think. Oh, you, do you, do you switch the, you went, no? Okay, never mind. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. 
Um, so, uh, okay, so on line 32, make the and sign and project ID and then close quotes. So inside the quotes and project ID equals. Close quotes, comma, space, project ID. I would put a new line after the open paren by enclosed packed, encode packed. So in ABI encode packed is the fifth thing. I would put a new line there. And then whatever it takes to balance the, per the parens. So I think all three parens. What does it not like about this? Does it dislike something? Yeah. Okay. That worked. So move the parens at the end of line 32 down a line. Okay. What was the error again? What error? Oh, well, oh, I thought it was underlined because it was a problem. Oh, no, yeah, I got rid of it. It was a memory string. Oh, okay, memory. okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> so this seems reasonable to me. Yeah, I have to test this. I just, okay, let me go back to this. Let's just make a request and see what happens. It's going to console log the order. I don't want to console log the order. I guess I do want to console well, log the order. Yeah, you can. It won't hurt anything. Um, you need, though, currently the chain link operator doesn't accept the third parameter that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need. This is local dev. I just want to see if I can make a request. I just want to make sure that this works before I push it. Okay. That makes sense, right? Yes. No, I was thinking that it required the that one of the steps required the node operator to do something before it would work. But here, let's try seven. But I'm also again a little lost at this point. Yeah. There's a lot Maybe of files. Puffing the pen. Yeah. Okay. That worked. It returned a project here. Okay. Oh, it's already returning a project. It was, wasn't it? So wait, so, wait but it it's... needs to receive a project. Right, 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 right. So price here, seven, right? And... It has to receive. That's a thing too. Yeah, okay. And I see, project I see. Equals... And then if you have any spaces, they're percent 20s. And honestly, with this, I think you can just write the spaces and Chrome will figure it out. Yeah, it did the percent 20, whatever. Okay, it ordered it. Let's try a different project. Well, no, you'll have to do it. You'll have to make it so that when that name up top changes, that the name on the bottom changes. Which currently it won't. If you remove project from the top, it would still stay on the bottom, wouldn't it? And not the what? entirety of project. Just like remove the third word. This word? Project patch reinforce. Well, no, remove like reinforce reforestation. And then, yeah, hit enter. See how it still says reforestation down in the... Because it automatically bought it. No, you remove the word reforestation. It's not passing the project through the API endpoint. In part uh, because you called it project ID and it's now being called project because of its type changed. So it's no longer project ID, it should now be project. Go back to the API endpoint. <laughs> so, where is that? Is this? this is not, this is, I don't know what the hell this is. I'm getting rid of this. Um, I 
Okay. So, uh, okay, so we create order. So we get called with. I could get rid of these two lines here. And... Um, hang on. You, yeah, you could. I mean, if nothing else, for those two, just remove the underscores from the variables in the, and you'll have the the same end result, I think. Yeah. So. So this is JavaScript. Okay, I'm used to reading TypeScript as of late. I expect it to complain at me more. Um. So. Project won't project ID on sixty three just be project? What no. is no? Hang on. I, where is the the output generated? There's project ID. Yes, but remember we changed it from project ID to project, and it's the name of the project. So I'm saying it would change here and it would change up at the top. So here's project. That was the hash. I think that was after we hashed it, right? Isn't that you never hashed? Scroll it. up to where, where. Just show me where project is defined. Project. Order dot data dot inventory dot shift dot project dot name. And see, <clears throat> scroll up just a little bit. Um, so on line seven, the query arguments are price and project. That's what's after the and sign is just project equals and then the project name. That type is defined. Oh, you don't have TypeScript. Why is it complaining? Because there's two projects now. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, I would put, um, oh, we're in JavaScript now. I got to think. I was going to re revoke. Because theoretically, the project name that's on the receipt should be the project name that you passed into the function, correct? You're going to create past order, and on line 20, you're going to change project ID to project? I'm going to create patch order. So on online, line, yeah, on line 20, you're going to take that off. And okay. then, so you're going to pass in a project, and then in create patch order, that's going to get passed into the API as the project ID. Yeah. And so the project ID that comes back on the receipt, which is what line 22 is. I don't need it. Yeah, but it should be the same thing as what you passed in, theoretically. I know, but you're saying I don't need it. I see what you're no, saying. No, you don't. Yeah, it should be the same thing. Um, so cost, you've got, you're calculating and doing some stuff. Mm. Okay, this should work. Let, let, let's sure maybe i don't know like i'm not 100 percent, but i don't see any errors right just okay. how much these debuggers speed us up is amazing it is so much faster i i mean everyone relies on their editor you don't have any choice it's just such a such a complex tool what for it to underline stuff and tell you, you oh fix yeah this. yeah my i was working in c sharp and my dot net wouldn't update it, it was i was it was point I, there was no point in me doing my job for a month pretty much <laughs> that's the uh, again i told you that okay so if i click enter here this should okay we what, i don't think we actually ever i don't i don't know what it's gonna do probably order don't. that data that price cannot read reading so go back i would put a print statement on line 22 ish so i mean this didn't even it probably on. didn't even order so i i don't understand um where is oh const order is what you get back from create patch order 
So scroll down to what's returned from create patch order. Wait, th this create is what's returned. Create patch return. order at the bottom though. Create patch order is down there. And what's returned from it is an order that you get back from. I guess this can just be project. Yes. Yes. But what's it? Uh, Patch calls it an ID, but it's not really. I mean, it is kind of, but not really. Um, okay. Does that run any different? Did we change anything? If it <laughs> matters? I think this is going to fail because the project isn't going to work. Because we, we remove that from well, this. Can you print out order? Will it print? I think so let's like look at hold on, hold on. I have an idea. Four oh four here. There's yeah. a there's an ID up at the top. That's what I remember seeing. Patches test offset, so that's not going to work. This is oh, our oh, oh, it 404 because it's an unknown. Yes, you're going to copy another valid project ID. Exactly. Okay, that's exactly what we want, too. Um, let's try the DAC one. I don't know if this will work. That makes sense to me. What you're doing makes sense. No, I get that. I'm saying I just don't know if it'll. Yeah, let's. Try to print order. On line 22. Yeah. So you need the console? What do you mean? The browser console? Did it not print order? My spider came back to life. I wrote a spider for Vecteasy. It's a, a vector image, uh, like stock photo place, but for lots of art stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a spider in, what the hell is this called? It is called Puppeteer, which drives a Chrome session. So I've got a, a, one of, a Chrome window that's just constantly surfing through this site and downloading the image from each page. Cool. And it, it died for a little bit. I, I theoretically have unlimited downloads and no royalty free use. And I I've never heard about a spider. Yes, yes, it is a spider. I'm going to Google spider, but I was like, that's not going to work. Um, no, yeah, it, you could uh, do web spider or web crawler, web spider, web crawler. Oh, it's a crawler. Oh, okay, a web but crawler. But it is. It's the the process that it's doing is called spidering, where you skip from page to page to page to page. And what are you looking for exactly? Um, I have been. So, can you see my screen? Uh, I am not looking at it because I don't want to crash my computer. But I could top in. Look at it just real quick. You made these? No, this is Vecteasy. So it is page after page after page. Each And so each artist will have like 
this one has 146, but a lot of them will have up to a thousand relatively good looking images. All, all of their stuff is reasonably good. It's a lot of different styles. But I am downloading as much of it as I can. And I want to put it all in IPFS and index it with ceramic. And I think that we could have an amazing site. It's gonna I'm confused. So I'm spidering this. I need to get I can't get it to run. Where'd it go? I lost it. What are you going to do with all of it, though, once it's in So there? I want to create an interface for browsing through huge quantities of images. Because I want to take, like, these ones that are multiple scenes or where there's multiple icons, I want to break those up into each individual. An image is a, is a singular thing. It's not these... You can have collections of them, and there'll be whatever for those interfaces. But ultimately, I want you to have access to each individual little image, which is just tons and tons and tons of images. Hmm. And then what? Um, so I want a lot of it for reacting to videos. If you've seen on Facebook when people will heart and it'll make little hearts go up the video. Yeah. That, but with arbitrary SVGs. So that you can have whatever reactions or emojis or whatever that you want. Very cool. That's what I was thinking about working on for HackFS is the ninth of or the eighth of July through the 29th. It's three weeks. That's a long time. No, I like a nice long hackathon though. Like the there's a Web three weekend, which is interesting to see what you can build over a weekend. But honestly, it's just not going to be all that much. Because right. it's a weekend and there's only so much you can get done. But three right. weeks is long enough that you can actually maybe build something interesting. And I yeah. I told you that – did I tell you that I can drive my stream deck? With, yes. Yeah. With your JavaScript. Stream. Yeah. And, and through the browser. Yeah. And so I was thinking about doing the reaction <laughs> interface for videos where – It'll have like nested sets of screens. I don't know. Or it is future thinkers. They want to take, the, uh, they have 400 acres and they want to map it using photogrammetry and create overlays of different developmental structure concerns, developmental concerns like the electrical systems and the plumbing systems and the buildings and the whatever's going on. Yeah. But to be okay. able to separate those layers out and let people focus on sort of specificity. Wow. It takes a while. So, so every time this loads, it's going to IPFS. Yeah. Uh, well, ceramic, a combination of ceramic and I, but it would be loading its models from, IPFS and this will yes these all of these images will go on IPFS as well and have an, an a, some sort of index in ceramic what I want the idea ultimately is that every tr every unique path like if I put enough words into a path every time I add a word I have the ability to exclude to, to subdivide a set into two Every time I add a word to a path, like my path here is home slash disk slash tip slash program slash rasterize. So each one of those is specifying the rasterize. And by the time I get to rasterize, there's only one project that I could be meaning. They, they, they cut down sets until there's only one thing left that it could mean. I want for every one of those to resolve to its best alternative. So there'll be a lot of different paths to get to a piece of content. Hmm. It almost, it really almost makes sense. I've gotten until the 17th. It really almost makes sense. I've gotten until the 17th to get coherent enough. Like I need 20 coherent minutes on the 17th of June. Okay. It's, it's region day for um, Metafest is right. the, tw the 17th of June. 
So 17, 16 days from now. Cool. I mean, this is a cool idea. I don't know. I'm, do you do presentations well? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I could help you with a presentation if that's what you're looking for. I will, I will definitely run ideas by you as I get something written down. I currently have nothing. I've been playing with the stream deck. That makes sense. So I need to, I need to write something down. I just haven't quite, I don't have, it's not quite cohered. Yeah, sure. Whatever, whatever you need. Okay. I'm using my Google Slides. Um, Where are yeah. we at? Where are we at? We're checking out your stuff. Uh, I'm going to stop sh watching you just to, so I don't crash. Oh, yeah, it. I was showing my spider off. I was showing my spider off. Yeah, no, that's, a nice, that's a nice spider. Yeah. When I was in college, my friend had this shirt, uh, this coat that had a giant spider like on the back. And like, uh, this story isn't going anywhere. But um, I remember reminded me of, yeah. Like, He's like, wow, it's Spider-Man. And I never, I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, back to this. Um, okay. Console logging order. It's not right. It's 404 in because the order is wrong. But it's 404 again. It should have worked this time. Are we sure? Go back to, hang on, I got to find your screen. Um, so go to. No project. With ID patches DAC offset. Yeah, project. I think that there's. I think that Project ID is a put back in the original, or take out the Project ID from the request to patch. Where is it, yo? I gotta like. You gotta do something like. I gotta you, do you something. You spend a good gotta... fifteen to twenty seconds between each transition because you're looking for where you stuck it. I don't know. I don't even know where it is. I have no idea. I don't see how you remember you what you're looking for. Like, if I had all these windows blipping around, I would completely forget what I was trying to find. But, uh, you just want me to get rid of this and project and see if it works. Um, is that what I want? Um, That's what I want. Okay. <laughs> it works. And it, there is no project anymore, right? Right. I don't even know how that works. Okay. Well, it's not being passed to projects. And well, so it's yeah, undefined. Happens, it's just, I guess it's undefined, and if it's it undefined, no, no, no. But it should still return a project because it did before. Name of mass G of project. Success true mass G. You see now it's not even. Hang on, print where is the order printing out? Where would yeah. that happen? Oh, is it there? Data. Scroll up to the top one more time. There. Wait. Stop. 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 Right there. ID. So that's the receipt ID. That's the receipt yeah. ID. Okay. I just I saw I saw something. I was like I just I know I just saw a unique ID. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um. I'm not sure how we lost that now oh because we're not we're not getting it here and it's blank if you scroll up above inventory what's above inventory that's a previous that's the registry url and then this is, I just this is to... double this is double logging okay oh it's printing out in two places okay yeah So, does it say anything in the documentation as to what request ID or what um, project ID is supposed to be? See? It says a, a UID. Where do you see that? I see string. But it is a unique ID. I mean, there is. This is a project ID. Is it? Is there a? Is there a? Um. So the for the project's endpoint is that if you go to the far. If you go to back. <laughs> Here, let's try this. 
I just wanted to see if it would expand out a list of what the methods within projects were. Wait, so I'm back here. So okay. go to the left-hand column, and then projects. Is that little arrow? If you click the little arrow, will it will it go down? No, nah, this is a get, okay. this, is doc, this is a doc book. No, I won't do that. Okay, I, I wanted to see what the methods are within projects. Is there a list? Is it possible to get a list of projects? It'll be a different endpoint. I know. I'm just like looking. Retrieve project ID. But you got to have a project ID. So there, the oh. next line. Look at the next line down below it, outside of the white box, is get a list of projects. Is what you want to do. Okay. Did it say if they were optional or not? I don't know. Like that, I guess. Um, yeah, I think if you don't send anything in, maybe it'll send you everything back. I don't know. I would, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to call this and see what the hell happens. Yeah. I would have taken out the orders, actually. Probably, yeah. Nah, I didn't. But it didn't error? Maybe you have to await it. Though I should have seen a... I would have thought there was a promise in there. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so project ID. Okay, it is. It is that. It's that. Yeah. It's that. So it's it's like you go to the project, and it's this. And it has the cost, right? So you could pick the cheapest one if you wanted to. You don't have to do it now, but it shouldn't be that hard if you got all of them. Yes, but I'm not using all their projects. Huh? I don't understand. Um, like I'm only interested in specific patch projects. Like, I don't want this. I don't want this. I want this. I think what I'm gonna do is have this one, charm, um, kelp, and then you can look them up in that list and manually make an array with the four or five IDs that you want to choose from? Maybe this one. I'm not... I, don't, I need a lower price point token because I, I mean... I don't know. Because I want a, a token with a lot of availability and a or later vintage. Okay. Um, like, these are 2007. Like, I don't care about 2007 things that happened in 2007. Uh, but for now, let's... Just because this is in... Oh, it's 640, damn it. Okay. Um, let's just comment that out. That's a useful thing to have in here. Okay, and then... What I should be able to do is do and project equals that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just I would there change we... it. I would change it back to project ID, ideally. Change what back to project? The variable ID. name. The variable name. <laughs> It was project okay. when it was the name of the project, and now it's the project ID. Okay, so the variable name here is up here, you mean? Um, yeah. Right. 
And right and on th on twenty. I'd remove twenty four. I don't need that either. What I said twenty four. What did you remove? Just this string. Oh yeah, you can't. But you could also remove twenty four. I can remove twenty. Oh, the console log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And wait. So, so, so this has to be project ID now. Uh, no. What do you mean? There's no project anymore. So you're going to want. I did you not? Okay, I gotta think. So this is after. Oh, this the create is create patch is... order, and the patch order on the receipt has the name of the. You currently Pro... have, yeah, you have you have project ID really right now. You need. To... I see. I see. This works. This works. This should work. That did not work. The project is not defined. The so this project. is on line 28. Project. Yeah, I was telling you, you have project ID. Is what you is what you have access to. And then this is project. Um. Yeah, scroll up a little bit to where that's defined. That's not defined. It's the data. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a variable. Uh, I don't think I defined it anywhere. Though. It's I think got I to be. I mean that's that's how variables work. Is that you have to define them before you can use them. So it has to be there somewhere. I mean, uh, is it passed in or what? I don't know. Well, this is mass G. Order dot data dot mass G. This is project, so this should be order dot data dot project. See, I thought that we had something that was talking about the ownerships and where scroll up until do a do a, a reverse search for project. So, was project that, was that project? Change that to project ID as well. Okay. I think it's safe to remove seventy two. Does it run? Are we are, have we broken it? Okay, so that where is that? That's this one. Okay, so scroll up. Didn't we have there was something about ownerships? Do you remember that in like institution or something? We were, we no. de we dereferenced deep into a JavaScript object. Scroll Thought up, I deleted scroll, that. Scroll, scroll, keep, keep going up for just a little bit. I know that I that we. Did. I think I just deleted that. Oh. Because we we had two projects. So I think that you need that because that's the actual project name, which is what you want. If you do a git diff, it should be in the diff. How do I do that? And from the command line, just git diff. Oh, there's two of these freaking things running? Looks that way. Okay, and so uh, it's you would do slash and then project, wasn't it? Project that was. 
hit slash and do it again. Do you, no, you can hit the just hit the slash and enter. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So paste that in on like isn't did it come from like twenty six? Probably. So you need the order, and you get project name. And now Save. you can change project ID on line 30 to project. And that's what you want. And this is good down here at the bottom. Okay, hang on. Yes, because that's the project ID. So you're past the project ID. You pass the project ID to create patch order. It sends it to patch, blah, blah, blah. And then in the order receipt you get the actual name of the project that you don't, you only had the ID for before. And then you send that to wherever you send it, the actual name. I think, mm. does it work? Are we, are we, does it not working? Mm, I'm just, um, look at that. Patches, reforestation, test, offset project. That's it. No, that's not it. I Isn't it? I thought that was the DAC one. Um, Go back to the JSON file from the calling the, um, the list of projects. Somewhere you were able to list projects from the API, so it should be in the Next.js app. Here, I want the DAC one. I probably just took the wrong one. Oh, I didn't know where you got that. I thought you got that off of the API response. No, this didn't work. How the fuck did that happen? Where did it come from? Where say, Find where Patches Reforestation Test Offset Project is in... I don't even know where that is. Go test two D six seven. Yeah. Two. What am I looking for? Where does that patches reforestation test project exist in your code? It doesn't. I did. I don't know where it would be. Uh, it's not here. <laughs> I am slightly confused. You, Unless they're API. You do like a, a hard reload and it's still... I'm, okay. I, don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why it's doing that. Okay, let's try a different one of these. Oh, they're all the same freaking no. Are they? Surely not. How else? How would this thing work? Like just as a project, as a program, it's got to right. be using that ID. Change it to project ID. You're wicked smart, you know that? Well, it didn't change it. Oh, it did change it. It did change it. Okay. I was like, oh it didn't God. do it. It didn't work. <laughs> um, okay, so that's good. So that means it orders automatically if there's no... Okay, I just need to, like, add that if statement. Um, well, what ha if you don't have it on now, there... If you don't have it on there currently, I think that it, it just does that, that first project. Right, but I don't want to order whatever the hell they're gonna. They're okay, gonna have. People, okay, no, I, you can you can do it however you want to do it. I don't know, right? Right now, I think this is a better solution. Uh, it also works. I mean, you could do. Um, um, math dot random. You could do an array with the like 
four or five IDs in it and just do a dot or do a bracket random times the length of it and pick a random element from the array. Oh, like instead of if no project ID, then project then, ID. Um, yeah, project equals ID equals random open array. Do an open, bra do an open bracket in a new line. Yeah, and then put each of I'd put put them on different lines. Well, no, you got to have a um, it is the length times math dot random. So um, you can't do it that way. So uh, wait, no, you can't. You can't because you you need to have a um, an open bracket at the end of that line. All right. For for now, uh, I'm you just got, you got another call too. I gotta not forget that. Yeah. For now, let's let this crash. Enter a project ID. Okay, great. For now, let's let let's let that work like that. Okay. And then in the future, we could make that all pretty and stuff. Well, you can pick from a, a list of alternatives. Right. Right. Um. Cool. So this works. So let's. Get out, get out of here. How do, I get out of here. How do I get out of here? Q. Q. Oh, it's like Vim. Oh my god. Oh, less. It's the program's less. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay. Now, I have a question for you. Okay. Are you available in an hour? Are you... Maybe. Okay. Um, no, seriously. Like, I, I have no idea. Like, I think I want to go eat something and then maybe, mm -hmm. like, watch TV or maybe program some more. I, I, I'm kind of on the fence right now. Okay. I mean, I'm. But I'm what do you hope for... to accomplish? If I if I make it back, what do you want to try to do? I want to do the layer zero stuff. Okay. Because we didn't even touch that. No, um, no, absolutely. There's there's definitely more to be done there. Um, so I just gotta think for a second. Yeah, sure, probably. I'm mean, very likely, uh, unless again, there's something really good on. Flickster is my pirating site. Mm, I use Streamio. Streamio. It's an app. Flickster that, like... is a website, but they have, I mean, I've been really surprised at their breadth. Like, I watched The Dangerous, okay, I watched Chippendale not too long ago. I watched Stranger Maybe. Things, I watched Obi-Wan. I watch a lot of TV. Not a lot, lot, but like a couple hours. I used to. Days. I it's just it. a, There's some really good TV. Like I enjoyed Stranger Things. I thought that they managed to continue to keep it interesting, even though it's the same basic premise every time. Yeah. But they may. I I liked it. I thought they managed to kind of tie things together in some ways that were didn't seem strained. Better Call Saul. I've been enjoying that. I like that too. Yeah. I saw the new Harry Potter, which was shit. I uh, that's the one with the animals is again. Fantastic yeah, Fantastic animals. Beasts. Yeah. I yeah. started it and I got something happened. I think I fell asleep. This is wild. Everything, I, everywhere, all at once. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I like that movie. Yeah. Um. Have you seen Top Gun? No. Did you like the original? I, I saw a couple minutes of it. It's uh, as a kid, I didn't didn't make a I, lasting impression. It didn't. Oh, they have a Chippendale. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. I, that's like in the top two or three movies of this month so far. Was that movie surprisingly enough? Hmm. But I thought um, Gadget Hack Ranch was hot. As which a kid. one? The 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 mouse, the mechanic mouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Know what you're talking about. Um. Cool. 
So yeah, I mean, feel again, your time. I'm not, I'm just curious. Um, so yeah, I'll hit you up in like an hour. Okay. And... I don't think there's anything on my calendar. If there is, I'll leave you a message. Great. That's perfect. Um, if not, uh, are you free tomorrow? Let me, let me pull up my calendar really quickly. Cool. cool. And tomorrow is, I think I want to try to catch the future thinkers at noon. But other than that, I don't see, let me, let me look on meta games. Meta game does events fairly well. They've been, people have been making events for most things that happen, which I like. Right. I like discord's event system. But let me look at There's only two events, and one of them is this, which hmm. I, I didn't start because we didn't do it in the Builder's Dungeon. And right. next is on no, Friday. I, yeah, so I, I got nothing. I am I am free as a bird. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, I'll hit you up in an hour, see what you're feeling. If yeah. not, tomorrow, whenever, whenever works for you. Yeah, um, no, three has been pretty solid. Gives me time to sort of get things moving, and then, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I um, yeah, and I, I honestly don't care so much where we do this, but I understand what Tommy's saying. I, I don't. Well, I, I don't. I, I don't understand. What's the motivation? I think he want. He's just like he's like people shouldn't confuse this with um, with meta games, and I, he like wanted to keep it separate. Um, see, and to me, it, I see, I'm much more about, and really, this is true for this space. It is about the individuals because the software that's getting written, like there's a, there's, there's only a few sort of front runners on interesting software, right? And it's, but I'm paying attention to the individuals more so than the organizations. I'm I'm kind of agnostic. Someone just said something, so I was like, "Cool, yeah, whatever." What I respect. I'm recording. The the fact that I'm getting the recordings is all that matters to me. Cool. Um, I gotta bounce because it's gonna right. it starts at seven. But thank you so much as usual, and uh -huh. um, uh, maybe I'll see you in like an hour. Very likely. Cool. Later. Peace.